Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another Wednesday night hobby hangout. Hope everybody is well. Hope you've all had a good week so far. I want to start with a, a many happy returns. Happy birthday to Christian. Uh, 21 again, mate, I'm sure. <laughs> I won't embarrass you asking how old you are. But yeah, happy birthday, mate. I hope you've had a hope you've had a a reasonably decent one for all we can do in in current uh, lockdown restriction type stuff but yeah i hope you've had a good day mate um let's have a look in the chat and see who we've got oh i had an itchy nose just before i started then i had this horrible feeling <laughs> i bet i bet when i go on camera i've got like something hanging off my face anyway let's go and, go and have a look you don't want to hear about that um we've got Mark Wright was in nice and early. Hello, Mark. We got ASDF. Nice to see you again, mate. Palmsy's in as well, saying hope everyone's doing well. We got Peter Kuman saying evening all. We've then got someone called Five O'Clock Games looking like how they're trying to change their name. It might have been Dirk, so I don't know. Maybe it was. Hello, Lord Maiden as well. Hello, Dirk. Hello, Tony. Saying, what was that? Yeah, Aubriel. Was that Cephalopod? Watch stream is done uh, on the chill with my mates and by candlelight. I've got my candle on tonight, mate, as well, actually. I've got, um, I had like a, a scented candle thing, which was like a really nice kind of relaxing smell. And obviously the wick burned all the way at the bottom, but there was loads of wax left in it. So I bought one of those little um, sort of wax melt things where you put tea lights underneath them to kind of just to, to get the smell out of the, the rest of the candle wax. It's quite quite nice, very, very, very zen. Uh, so, what can I say? Um, Scott Lowe says, evening all. Don't know if I'm painting is a good idea. Oh, I don't know if painting is a good idea tonight as I have accidentally had a little bottle of Baileys. <laughs> yeah, that, that might put a spanner in the works, mate. I'm not a fan of Baileys, mate. I have to say, it's, I, I love coffee, but I'm not a fan of like coffee type flavored stuff. I don't even know if Baileys is, like, is, is coffee flavored. I've just got it in my head that it is. It's creamy though, isn't it? That's what I'm thinking of, I think. Um, Busey's in as well. Saying, uh, evening blackjack, it's nearly time to pop all those pink lids open. It is, mate, it is. Good evening, Peter Nicholas. Said he's not painting tonight, but he'll be listening while I sort of grid piles of hobby material. Right then, mate, your, your chief uh, your chief chatter than in that case. Excuse me, folks, I'm itching on the end of my nose. I don't know if I've got one of the hairs from my moustache poking the wrong way and tickling it, but it's really irritating me. Good evening, Christian there, birthday boy, hello. Yoakum's in as well, this is inspired by Monday's fighting fantasy stream. I'm going to try a similar setup when me and my workmates have our after work through teams on Friday. Nice one, mate. I'm glad it was an inspiration for you. Um, uh, Lord Techno Pants is in as well, seeing so letting everyone down, writing Christmas cards. I just had this conversation with my wife today, actually. I, I'm a grumpy old bugger. I think I won't be sending me Christmas cards this year. I don't really... Who, I, I might send all of you lovely uh, lovely Patreons and stuff. I might send you an e-Christmas card, maybe. But yeah, I don't think I'll be sending many, if any, this year. Um, Busey said, might not be painting, but he'll probably be opening and closing a few paint lids. <laughs> nice one. Um, Dirk says, he's going to put some paint on a hazmat team. I wonder what you're, what you're painting then, mate. Ortega says, can't stay, but he'd look to see you in the rerun. See you then, mate. Uh, can I just check as well? Is the is the um, echoes? There shouldn't be any echoes, folks. Um let me know if the sounds are. Right. I was just going to ask, actually, is the is the music too loud? That's what I was going to ask. I'm wondering whether you can hear the music coming back, but there shouldn't be any echoes. Everything's muted, so there's nothing kind of doubling back on itself. <laughs> Pusey saying he could see the nose hair, so he changed it down to 30, 360. Yeah, I tell you, what, it, it needs a shave, mate. That's what it is. I haven't done my hair or I haven't done my hair or anything to, uh, this week. This needs a shave. I think this might get a good trim back as well. I'm being a bit of a tramp this week, I think. Um, Blizzards are saying, not sure how much paint he'll be able to do. Um, his, his neck and back are on fire, but he's still working on those Death Guard bases. I hope you're okay, mate. Christian's saying, it sounds good and music is just right. Oh, what's that little symbol next to your name, mate? Did you put that? Was that like a little emoji thing? Or did that, does that come up? Oh, it only come up that time. No, sounds good then. <laughs> uh, everyone says I talk here. Um, where else are we up to? Um, DRC Fungus says... P Puma. <laughs> okay, mate. Uh, Peter says he settled for Chaos Terminator's great minis, but will be a bugger to paint with all the gold trim. Yeah, I remember my little boy getting Chaos um, Chaos Space Marines and stuff, and like all that gold trim was like, oh, God. Not a great place to start. Uh, I think he was only about eight or something at the time. Um, Peter saying no echoes. Good. Christian saying this sounds good. Music good. Thank you very much, mate. 
Uh, Andrew says, don't worry, I'm here. I'll be driving again in a few though, no worries. Good morning, VG. how are you doing? Says, no hobby this morning, but gotta head out later for a drop off and shopping. No worries, mate. Uh, Christian saying, no idea what that little logo is. Do you know what it is, mate? It's just cropped up. It wasn't on your first couple of it wasn't on your first couple of comments, and now it is. Random, because the the little kind of um, spanner thing means that you're an admin. I wonder, I wonder if it's a birthday thing or something like that. I've got no idea what that is. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> birthday cake logo. It might be, mate. Um, I can't even pronounce that, Lord mate. What does that say? Yuri P Pides is waiting for you. Is that say? Uh, Tony said it sounds like a 70s porn movie all's good I've got no idea what it sounds like I guess, yeah I can't hear it so I've got no idea what kind of music you're listening to there's just a big pile of kind of like license free music um, VG says next project debating his dark elf blitzball team or in the spirit of the season finally getting to last year's red gobble you've got to go for the air uh, the red gobble Dirk says it's framed to Andy's porn it's just it, it's at that horrible stage where it's kind of it's, it stopped growing down and now it's starting to curl and, and grow out over. This is my kind of like homeless homeless shelter style. It needs a good trim back, I think. Um, VG saying, what should we do for, you've got to do the Christmas gobble, mate, that's for sure. Anyway, let's uh, let's switch over to the painting desk tonight and see what we're up to. So very quickly before we start, this was last week's model. All, all dried and finished and uh, I'm happy with how that turned out. Bit of, bit of war cry, it was last week, wasn't it, yeah? Did we paint war cry? We did paint war cry last week. Yeah, bit of war cry last week. Good afternoon, Christopher Warden. How are you doing, mate? And then tonight we're going to be painting a bit of Malifaux stuff. Let me just uh, get that into focus there because I've got it on, I've got it on manual focus tonight, so it doesn't keep picking up the paint pots. Um, yeah, this we, we're, we're painting a bit of Malifaux tonight. So this is from the Lady Justice core box. Let me just, um, oops, if I can zoom out. On this one, so this is from this core box here. I bought my bought it for myself. I think it was kind of October time. I hadn't bought anything for myself in a little while, so this was a little treat. I was I wasn't going to do anything on the channel with it, but to be honest, I sat at the weekend and I painted up um, Lady Justice herself. So let's uh, let's just get back into that one. I painted this one up myself, and let me just make sure that's nice and in focus there. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It was just quite nice painting something a bit different for a change. I just, uh, it was just quite, it's mainly contrast paints. The only thing I didn't paint contrast paints on this pretty much were the skin tone. I used something like Kislev Flesh, I think it was, and then used contrast um, Gulliman Flesh over it just to give it a little bit of shading. And the, I think the, um, like the, the the blindfold around her head as well. I think I used Ulthwine Grey for that one. Um, and the silver, kind of dry brushed silver over top of the grey, um, a grey contrast paint on the, on the sword and stuff. So that was it. The idea was it was a relatively simple model. I haven't finished the base on it yet. I haven't decided what to do with the base yet. It's just a dark brown at the moment. But I thought what we'd do is we'd crap on and we'd do another one. So that was Lady Justice. She's the leader of this little pair particular crew. This is the judge, and she's kind of like a, what they call a henchman, which is like a like a sidekick type thing. Um, so she is the judge, and then I think this is, that's what we're going to paint tonight anyway. But then inside the box that you get, you also get the death marshals. So these are pretty cool. So standing on their coffins on fire, how they've got like skeleton heads as well. It's hard to see under those wide brim hats, but they kind of got like skull skull faces. Yeah, Lord Mate saying that's a good looking henchman model, a new sculpt. Yeah, the old sculpt I think was like a male judge model. I think it wasn't a female one like that one. Um, yeah, so this is one of the Death Marshals, which I really like as well, because we kind of, like I said before, we've got the coffin kind of bursting out the flames there. And they've got, if you think like Ghost Rider type faces with the skulls. Um, Clint saying the old judge got killed in the law, right? Being a while since I followed. The old judge did get killed, mate. That's exactly why it's a, a new judge. Um, so yeah, that's one of the Death Marshals there. We've got um, another one of the Death Marshals. I love these models. I mean, everybody kind of says about how fiddly um, sort of Malifaux models are and stuff like that. And I must admit, like these flames on the back, there's probably about seven or eight pieces to those flames. 
you can't really see them but there's like bits of the flames are separate and stuff but they fit together really well um they fit together really well so no real issues with them but they are slightly more fiddly if you like if you like think of war cry models and stuff like that they're no worse than war cry models and uh, this is another one of the um of the um what i just call them the death what i just call them yeah death marshals i couldn't remember the name <laughs> um so this is another one carrying his uh his coffin there and then we've got the third of the death marshals i like this one i just like the idea this one hasn't got a hat on so you can actually see the face and stuff it'll be a lot nicer to paint i think um so this is the uh the third of the death marshals so that's quite nice and then the last model in that set as well is the skills of justice and this is like kind of some kind of like slave type character um with the skills on these across his his neck, neck there and he's got you can't really see but you will do once it's painted he's got um um like a like a face mask on i think if you can see on the box actually let me show you the cards actually because the cards are really nice they're kind of plastic you can see that the shine on them there they're really nice quality the cards and you can see the size they're kind of like tarot deck sizes so we've got uh lady justice there the judge and we've got a card there for the death marshals and there you can see a bit of a better picture of the skills of justice as well um so so yeah we're gonna we're gonna paint up the judge tonight i think and i'm just gonna i'm gonna stick to the plan stick with the uh stick with the contrast paints i think um lord tenapan says nice model have you seen how many models have been added to some of the factions in the new war cry books like nighthorn i've not really paid too much attention to be honest mate i've uh I kind of decided not not to pick those books up yet so no i've not i've not really dug into it. i know there's a lot being added but i've got i've kind of got mixed feelings about it if i'm, if I'm perfectly honest I, I i liked my war cry when it was a, when there was a bit less stuff um i mean it's, it's not a problem you, you can take more stuff you can take less stuff i'm just not a fan of list building if i'm perfectly honest which is why i like these kind of like buy, buy a box and play the game kind of things it's why i loved war cry when it first started it's why I like Wild West Exodus. It's why I like Malifaux. I just like these ideas of just just buy a box and play play with the models that's in it kind of thing. Um, Dirk saying fiddly bits you have to glue on and don't see afterwards are the best. Yeah, I think what I meant was you, you can't see which bits were separate. Yeah, uh, Clinton. I wish Malifaux had more conversion pieces. Start with minis with Malifaux and had zero bits until I got a GW kit. I I'm not again another reason why I love this kind of stuff. I like these poses. I think they're really dynamic. I mean like that that model there i i love the pose to that model i'm not going to be wanting to kind of kit bash that and pull bits off it and do stuff with it i just i just like i like buying a model putting it together and just painting it and i'm not a, a kind of kit bash type stuff um tony says if i made the marshals again i'd leave the hat off till they were all painted yeah potentially me I, I i maybe i would have done the same as well but to be honest if you if you can't see it i ain't going to worry about it um Blizzard saying being getting back into Malifaux lately. The wife bought me the new McMorning crew for my birthday. I used to love the old McMorning um, models. The original one from version one was really nice. The version two one was much more kind of sinister. Um, I don't think I've seen um, version three yet. Um, Krabby, good evening to you, mate. Uh, and Lord Technopan's only seen on YouTube, not bought any. Um, yeah, I, 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 they're not available, mate, until this weekend. They, they went up for pre-order last weekend and the people that are showing them off are all the ones that got them got them sent early obviously so uh, andrew saying the reason i was looking at necromunda buy one regular box and an elite box and keep it at that i think the problem with necromunda is you end up kind of kit bashing for for like weapon swaps and stuff like that don't you but i'm not i don't i don't know a lot about necromunda if i'm perfectly honest so um i'm probably not the best person to be to be a uh, give an advice on that one right we're gonna get in with the the black contrast and we're gonna just do inside the cape so we'll make a start on that one but what I have been doing folks is I've been thinning them down with the with the contrast medium as well and I'm just finding it's uh they behave more like a um they behave a bit more like like an ink which is uh is a nice consistency um good evening luke how are you doing mate nice to see you nice to have you in hope you're doing well fella 
Um, let's get this. Let's see where I've put that contrast medium on a on a on a white uh, tile. It's quite difficult to see. Right. Andrew saying, yeah, you're right. Kit bashing is a part of Necromunda, but keeping it simple is part of the challenge. Yeah, like I see, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not massively up on Necromunda. Just, I kind of, I try to keep on top of it with like sort of reading bits and pieces and stuff. But as for um, the ranges of models and stuff like that, most of it's kind of lost on me, if I'm honest. Right. All right, we'll get in. We'll get started then, folks. Eh. So, anybody else painting tonight? What's on your paint tables this evening? Have you got much? Uh, are you all getting ready for Christmas as well? Have you got? Have you got any hobby stuff uh, on the Christmas list for the family to pick up for you or anything like that? <laughs> Lord Technopan saying I I wouldn't know where to start list building. I'm a sucker for nice minis though. Yeah, that's that's kind of me. I mean, I mean, because I don't really play anything sort of mega competitively these days. The list building side of things is it's largely kind of irrelevant really as long as it's a, a legal uh sort of a legal force i'm not kind of mixing stuff from factions that aren't allowed to be played together kind of thing um, but as long as it's a legal force and uh and it's playable i tend not to uh i tend not to kind of I, i've just never really enjoyed list building for a moment like I'd much rather, I think I've said this before, I'd much rather just get somebody say, here's a list, play that kind of thing. I, I'm not a fan on deck building and that kind of stuff. It's not a part of the hobby I enjoy. I, don't, I much prefer just the painting and the playing itself. I, f I, like, I like the kind of the reading of the law and the background and I like kind of, I like talking about the hobby. But um, yeah, kind of list building and trying to math hammer stuff out and that. Yeah, I just, I just don't get enjoyment from it, so I'll leave that to the folks that do. Um, Peter says, yeah, same with Mordheim. He was supposed to change the models to match their gear. I never bothered. I like the old metals as they are. I just equip them with what come. I only play for fun anyway. Yeah, I, I just seem to remember a lot of the, uh, the guys from my old local club were quite heavily into kind of like what you see is what you get when it came to Necromunda. So they were kind of magnetizing weapons and they were buying bits and pieces to, to switch over and stuff. They, I wouldn't say they took it seriously, but from a hobby perspective, they kind of, they took it quite seriously, should we say. So. Right, just get a bit of contrast onto the hair there, just to darken it down a bit. And give it a black hair. We'll give her quite a peel scar, I think, when we get to that bit. And what I'm finding with these contrast paints now is I'm kind of, I'm doing like multiple thin layers just to build up the coverage that I want. So thin, thin them down with the contrast medium and then just build them up into, into multiple thin layers. And I'm, I'm really happy with the, uh, with the finish on them. I don't, I don't get any of the kind of streaking or the, like staining type stuff you get. Um, where's this one up to? ASDS is assembling the Catacombs box. Nice one, fella. Um, Chris Awarden's working. Hope you're okay, mate. I hope it's nothing too taxing there. Hope you're having a bit of a chilled working day. And I hope the, this kind of bit of background distraction for you is keeping you well. Uh, Peter says he's on his ta on paint table aside from the Chaos Town, it's three French dragoons for the Napoleonic Wars and a Bretonia Night Musician and the Green Knight. So just just a quiet night in for you then, eh? Um, is it, is it Jean-Louis uh, Payan? Hello, have you seen the new Victorias? They are far too much more politically correct. Um, I don't think I have seen the new Victorias, mate. I've, got, I've still got the old ones, the old metal ones with the, with the swords and stuff. Like, ah, I've still got the old ones. But I've not, um, like, first edition metal ones I've got. Um, but no, I've not I've not seen the Victorias. Um, but the, uh, the I, I like the I like the Victorias from a from a theme perspective, shall I say, their the background story and stuff. I like that. Um, Lord Tech, I like nice I like nice models and fun games. I laugh. 
yeah, I'm with you on that, mate. I'm with you on that as well. Um, Clint says, do you prefer the uh, third edition rules? I did find myself needed a whole faction to play. Um, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've, I've not played a game of third edition yet. I, I've obviously read the rules because the, the rules are free. You can download them for free. Anybody that's interested in Malifaux, you can you can download the, the rules for free and, and have a look over them. Um, they seemed fine. Um, I played I played a lot in first edition, very little um, in second edition. Um, but I was I'm kind of tempted to to pick it up, pick it up again and uh, and try and get some games of it, which is why I thought I'd treat myself to a um, to a faction and just just paint it up for fun, basically. Um, however, I did buy when I when I bought I bought this set, I bought the um, the special edition the Halloween Pandora set. Was it called something Wars? I think it was or something like that. Um, I bought the Pandora set, and I also treated myself to um, to the to the the rule book as well, the hot the the softback rule book because I, I Malifaux is it's kind of maybe maybe a, a bit from tomorrow's video. This as well, I've, been, I've spent the last three or four days doing tomorrow's video, talking about um, like the law and the background in, in games, uh, uh, and Malifaux is one of the ones I talk about tomorrow. And uh, I love Malifaux's background in law. It's it's one of the it's one of the richest of any tabletop gaming. I, th I think it's like Malifaux's been around for about eleven years now. There's a hell of a lot of background to it, uh, and I think it's kind of underrated. I think most people just don't really know much about it. So I bought the the new rule book or the, or the latest rule book more more as like a kind of like a novelist for something to read really because there's always loads of um, background stuff in them. Uh, and I'm I'm really enjoying reading that and kind of catching up on the progression of the story and stuff. So yeah, I, I think at some point I will uh, I will push some models around the table and and uh, check out third edition properly. But at the moment, mate, as you know, I'm not getting to play anything at the moment. So yeah, no, no matter whether it's a, a game I know inside out or it's a brand new game that I'm that I'm interested in, I, I'm not getting to play anything. So. Sad times, man. Sad times. So, yeah, I've heard good things about third edition, however, so that can only be a good thing. Um, right. So you'll see how it's kind of, it's a little bit patchy here. And that's predominantly because I've not put it over, like, the, the fancy... GW base codes. This is just a it's a black prime and then a, a bit of a white ink over the top. But um I'll just build I'll build it all gradually. I just just doing it like this in th in thin layers just it stops it kind of streaking, it stops you getting those kind of like coffee stain type uh, sort of tide marks on them and things. And I'll just gradually build it up and do it like that. Get a slightly smaller brush. Uh, scroll back a little bit because I missed some chat there. Uh, Yoke, I'm saying finally got his mini swap sent, so now it's Warcry Warbands times five on the table, plus the scenery for catacombs. Nice one, mate. I look forward to see what you do with them, mate. I always like seeing your painted stuff. Um, just getting to the little tight pieces here. Um. Rob's in as well, seeing working on some 10 millimeter Marines for World War II. Been in a draw for a while. <laughs> Tony says he's got Barry White on candles burning and getting on with his buddies. Nice one, mate. Sounds like a bit of sexy time there, mate. Barry White and the candles on. I'm, I'm honored to be part of your evening. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's quite nice just to kind of, just to chill. Just to have a little bit of a relaxing evening. You don't even have to paint. Just to get yourself a nice drink or something. Just just kick back, join in the chat. It's just like hanging out with your mates, isn't it? Uh, that's the whole point, really. So, um, let's get into this bit. Uh, Lord Maiden says, that sounds like too much hassle and money spent on what you see is what you get. I'd rather have a model and think they have a weapon or something. I think that, I mean, to be honest, I mean, the lads I'm talking about played Malif uh, Malifaux, sorry, they played Necromunda for years as well, like it, back in the day and stuff. So a lot of them had loads of old models uh, plus the fact um, 
plus the fact that they had the sort of they've been gaming for years, so they had bits boxes all over. So a lot of the stuff they were doing were, were kind of so they, it wasn't costing them anything extra if you like, because a lot of the stuff they already had. But there was kind of a bit of pressure, and, and, and it wasn't from them really. I mean, they, they weren't kind of enforcing it or anything. But I, I think there was a an element of like you know everyone else is doing it, so. If you come into it new, there was an expectation, I think. Although it was maybe unwritten expectation, or maybe I misunderstood it. So, all right, so there's the first kind of layer of that one. We'll just tidy up down this edge here a little bit. Sorry if some of this goes off the camera or it goes out of focus a little bit. I found when I'm sitting like this, when there's so much in the background, like all these pot, uh, paint pots and stuff, because there's like text and stuff on them, and because these models are quite sort of grey when they first start out, the camera loves to focus on the background stuff, so I've just put this on manual focus, so it, it's fine when I'm kind of sitting like this, but if I get in like close, it won't focus, so like I'll, I'll be just moving around as I go. Um, Tony says, evening all, just got to prime the first couple of model ships, ready to chuck some paint on them tonight. Nice one, mate. Nice to see the, uh, the fleet starting to take shape. Nice to see so many people starting to get their Armada stuff now as well. It's uh, it's just a shame we can't all uh, we can't all get together and have a have a big sail off. I'm sure Mantic would have had a, an awesome launch day had they been able to, but uh, yeah, sadly, uh, sadly not. I did see somebody was talking to Ronnie about uh, how many ships they've sent out, and I think they've sent thirty five thousand ships. Um, so that ain't bad, is it? Certainly been popular anyway. So I don't think we'll have any hassles or any problems of trying to trying to pick up the game anyway. There's plenty of the ships gone out. Um. <laughs> Nostox says I got the notification. <laughs> nice one, mate. I'm glad. There you go. Keeps you, keeps you up to speed. I think it's one of those things as well. Like uh, YouTube don't even always send out the notifications, so it's worth just um, clicking that little bell icon just to get the notification switched on. Because if you if you tend to come to the live streams, it tends to send it out to you. But if it sends you stuff and then you, you don't you don't generally click on those links like for other channels or whatever, then um, then yeah, yeah it tends to kind of dry up and it doesn't always tell you right, i'm just looking how i want to i'm going to try and uh just i think we'll start with the red cuffs there but with like a black band on them and we'll just take it nice and steady and this is what i'm quite enjoy this is one of the reasons i, I bought these models i mean like i said before malafor has got kind of like a, a fond place in my heart really it's the it's the game that really got me into gaming um because i i painted 40k stuff but i didn't really get into actual playing the game and i actually sold my 40k stuff and uh and bought a load of malifaux stuff to be fair so um yeah malifaux's got a kind of a soft spot in my heart really so i just thought i'm gonna buy some models buy the ones i like i've got no idea sort of much about the rules or anything at this stage or like how the game plays or what's good or anything like that just gonna buy the nice ones and I'm just gonna just gradually just paint them as a nice little kind of a nice little hobby project really so yeah so that's the plan and I've been listening to um, loads of Malifaux kind of podcast stuff just just listening away um I won't spoil too much like I said like tomorrow's video I've got I've literally I, I started scripting it on Saturday was it or Friday? I think I started scripting it Friday last week. I finished it off scripting it on Saturday, and then I've been recording it. Monday I recorded the audio. Was it Monday or Tuesday? I don't even know where I am. Tuesday I think I recorded the audio for it, and then yes, yesterday and today has been editing it all together and putting all the the video video footage with it and stuff like that. So it's been a bit of a a labor of love a bit of hard work tomorrow's video so hopefully you folks uh you like it if not 
<laughs> I can't change that, but I enjoyed making it anyway. So I'm happy with it. I've got a little bit more to finish off on it tomorrow. I'll put some kind of some background audio on it and stick the trailer on the end and stuff. And then uh, and then it's a, it's a good one. Jobs are good as they say. Right, that's uh first couple of layers of white on there. Not a red rather. <clears throat> I think we'll come in with um, I think we'll come in with a, like a gold gun to fur, I think, for the uh for the trousers. Um let's have a look. Uh Nostox is working on offers. Working on offers. I don't know what that means, mate. Uh, Peter says, I have the knight and the dragoons on my table in case I get bored out with the chaos trim so I can switch up for 15 minutes. That would send me insane, mate. I need to focus on one thing. Uh, Lord Maiden says, oh, or he did say, where was it? Um, there's a free Marvel 3rd edition app that has all the cards and news and rules. Yeah, it's brilliant, mate, actually. I've got, have I got it on my phone? I can't remember if I've got it on my phone, if I've got it on my iPad. I did just download it the other day. I think it's on my iPad downstairs. Um, yeah, but it's it, it's a it's a brilliant app, really really good. I like the app. Um, uh, Clinton, the thing that captured me law wise was the broadside broadcast, basically the stories from the book in all time radio drama form. Yeah, it's honest. I, I mentioned that mate on tomorrow's video actually. Of kind of, of if you're interested in the law of Malifaux, places to places to kind of get get more. Um, and yeah, I think it's especially due to the fact it's like a, it's an official Malifaux kind of podcast thing. It's not like a sales pitch. It's not like a marketing thing. Uh, they're not trying to sell you anything through it. It's it's just like really nice just to put on in the background and just listen. It's it's really nice kind of painting like audio because it's just quite relaxed, like an audio drama type thing. Um, yeah, I really I really like that, mate. Lord Maiden says, so first edition was great, second edition was good, but ended up having lots of cards, as every leader had like six upgrades. Yeah, I remember all the upgrades in second edition. Third edition cut things right back and made things simpler and better. That's kind of what I've heard, mate. I mean, I've been listening to podcasts and stuff to see what sort of people generally think about it. Um, and, I th and I think basically where they were getting with the upgrades, the upgrades were maybe getting a little bit out of control and stuff. Um, that's from what I understand. So, yeah, it's... I just I love the fact that it's something really different. You get, you get a very different experience, or I used to get a very different experience playing Malifaux because it was um, like playing with like it, it works for those I don't know. It works with a deck of cards, fifty-two card deck, as opposed to dice, and uh, that's just something quite unique. There's not a lot of games, if if any, that work like that, and it's just something really uh, quite novel, and it and it works really well. Because rather than just like rolling a dice and having a one in six chance every time you roll it, um, there's a history to a deck of cards. So if you if you know for a fact you've pulled out all all low numbers, that like you you know you've got high numbers in there to kind of come out. And there's something there's something quite quite nice about flipping cards in a game that that gives it this. It's it's kind of weird. It's a little bit like Wild West where Wild West Exodus with the poker chips. There's just something that feels really nice and tactile about it. Um, sort of, it, it, it gives you that almost like a feeling like you're, this is going to sound proper wonky now, but like almost like you're in some kind of like old western kind of saloon playing poker type thing. It, it, it's, it just really kind of fits with the theme of it. I love the fact that uh, Wild West Exodus uses those poker chips as well for, um, what are they for again? Fortune points, I think they are. It's it just it's it's all about the the feel and the the kind of like the fun of the game really and yeah it's just another thing that adds to it. I'm surprised more games haven't kind of gone to card decks with uh, I, I say the success of Malifaux. I have no idea in the grand scheme of things how big it is, but it's it's been around for eleven years uh, and it's on its third edition, so it it can't be that kind of uh, it must be relatively popular. So. Yeah. So that's uh, something maybe for the future, but I'm enjoying listening to the lore of it. I'm listening to the background stuff, reading the book, um, digging up as much as I can, listening to the audio books. I'm enjoying it. 
Uh, David Mackay says, paint a couple of things I printed over the weekend. Aboleth at the minute. Aboleth, I don't know what that is, mate, actually. Greetings, Jim Zom. How are you doing? Says, hoping me and everyone else is well. I think everyone's pretty good, mate. Um, Peter Nick says, oddly, I bought a set of figures for Malifaux some time ago. Um, I've got loads, like, in a... In a I've, I've actually, I've got, like, a Battle for Malifaux bag with loads of my old stuff in. I'll dig them out at some point, and I'll show you the old ones I, I painted up. Like, these are among the first models I painted, basically. Um... Tony says, what, exactly what it is. I'm chilling with my mates, enjoying an evening of chore with you lot. Nice one, mate. Uh, Derek is saying, GW used to sell weapon packs for people wanting to convert Necromunda models. I think they still do, mate, but they, they're, um, they are Forge World stuff now, I believe. Um, Peter saying, I try to find them and see if they can be used. I think, essentially, mate, they've, they've, um, they, they can all still be used, all the Malifaux models. Uh, th there's a few that they've kind of retconned out of the, out of the game. But essentially, most of the stuff is is still fully usable, and um, and all of the cards and stuff are online, so you can download the cards. The rules are free. The cards are free as well, so you can download them and print them off. Or they, uh, there's a really good app that you can um, you can get the cards on as well. Um, so yeah, if you've got old models, mate, you can still you can certainly still use them. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with them. Um, I've certainly still got some old ones as well. All right, I'm gonna try. All right, I might have, this one might. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll refocus this one a little bit. Oh, right. So I'm gonna try and get in close and just paint the trim on the on the jacket here. This is my uh, my concentrating silence here. Just put them across here as well, these little tie strips on here. Um, Blizz says he finally got his track and freezer martyr stuff. Nice one, mate. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, mate, you've just been uh, towards the back of the queue a little bit, I think, mate. It's, uh, I think some, there's been a, a hell of a lot of, like I said before, they've shipped out something like 35,000 ships to people. Um, so, and it, and it it caught them by surprise. They they never expected to sell that much stuff. I'm not saying my uh, my reviews or stuff had anything to do with it, but I would like to think it helped. Um, but yeah, it's it, it kind of caught them off guard a little bit, I think. And obviously, they've been working absolutely flat out. As as, as Kirsten will tell you when if she comes in later on as well, they've been working absolutely flat out, kind of day and night getting these uh, on and every, everybody in the business has been, whether you work in marketing or whether you work like sort of uh, on artwork or something like that, everybody's been in the warehouse packing boxes and, and trying to get them things out as fast as they can. So yeah, it's uh, somebody's first and somebody has to be last unfortunately. So some people will be, some people will have theirs a little bit delayed and some people have got them obviously as part of the first delivery. I remember when I got Hellboy Kickstarter I think I must have been pretty much one of the last ones to get theirs. It felt like everybody and their dog <laughs> had uh, had their Kickstarter in their hands before mine arrived. It kind of, uh, it took the wind out of my sails of doing any more content for it, really, because by the time I got mine, I think everybody there, uh, everybody had already kind of sort of uploaded loads of videos and stuff. So I didn't end up doing much content for for, for Hellboy when it came out, um, partially because everybody already had it. Conversely, when I when I got my uh, Resident Evil 2 board game, I think I was one of the first people to get it. And when I did my review of it, I think it was one of the first reviews that was up online, and that video still gets views to this day. So it just goes to show it's a, it's a timing thing, and especially when you, like me, if you do this full time, getting stuff early or getting early access to things or, or being among the first people to get it is like gold dust, honestly. Like when you see the kind of the big YouTube channels who get like video game reviews early and that kind of stuff, or they get consoles early or to, to review. Um, like it doesn't cost the company any more money, but it's, it's, it makes a massive difference. It's the same with all the guys that get all the GW stuff early and things like that. Like there's no point kind of, I know people still do it, but like, like the, the amount of people that do like an, an unboxing of something 
like when they when they buy them at retail bearing in mind everybody and their dog has already done an unboxing normally including GW um, yeah, it's, timing really is everything with that kind of stuff right I'm gonna put a little bit more black inside the cloak here as well just to darken that down a bit further keep going with that um, where are we up to Peter says it I passed for a mortar just really wanted that Belgian army for bolt action got to do my country proud um, my my mate um, who I normally <laughs> when lockdown's not a thing normally play games with has been painting up a bolt action army he just just painting one up because he he's wanted to paint an army basically so um yeah I've, I've got my Germans and my, my Americans as well from the band of brothers starter box so yeah we we might push some bolt action stuff around maybe in the new year if we can get together so we crack on with this um Tony says from what I understand the demand for a mod are far exceeded expectations which is great news yeah I think that's just I think I said that um just before there mate it's it certainly kind of caught them off guard but it's a, it's a it's a good problem to have both from a from a company point of view which means that they're uh, they were right to kind of take that risk and, and not not go to retail and stuff and uh, not go to Kickstarter rather go straight to retail uh, and it's also good news for for us as players as well that um but the uh, the game looks really popular. Right. Down there. Uh, yeah. Look, Techno Panzer saying it's all Forge World now. Uh, Lord Maiden says, yeah, you and me both had 40k stuff, but Malfoy brought me back into miniature gaming with my best friend, and we haven't looked back since. Yeah, honestly, mate, it's just I, I just find it such a rich, a rich world that um, like the stories and stuff. It's it's not like the difference with the background and the stories is it's not just about like constant fighting like it, there's more kind of like political wheeler dealing and like sort of smuggling going on and, and the game reflects that in its in its like missions and stuff of like stealing objectives and kind of uh sort of like stealing the plans and that kind of stuff it it's just it's not just about battering 10 piles that's not out of each other uh, and it's, uh, that's a nice change of uh change of pace I mean obviously combat's still a thing but um, what the hell's all these little weird icons it was weird because I wonder if it only happened when it was live it's only next I wonder no, it can't it can't be the membership icons because Tony still got his next to his name I'll have to look into it I wonder what it is I've never seen it before tonight. Like at the start of the chat, Christian didn't have that little symbol next to his, and now he has. What happens if I click on there? Let me have a little click and see if it's. Does it do anything? No, I can. I can hide. I can put it in. <laughs> never mind. Um, let's have a little look. Uh, Christian uh, sharing the link for the for the Patreon there. Thank you very much, mate. I've actually, it, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a slow month for Patreons, actually. I, lo I lost a couple at the end of last month. There was a couple of declined payments, and, and they haven't renewed them. Um, and I, I don't think I've had a new Patreon for almost a month now, which is <laughs> scary, considering that's my, that's my wages. But um, no, it's cool. If anybody wants to kind of come over and check it out, please do. It'd be awesome to have you as a Patreon. Um, it helps keep the lights on. So, yeah, please do uh, think about checking that out. Um, Luke's here. What made you start painting the Malifaux again, mate? Just fancy it. It was purely just... I just... I, I wanted to treat myself to something that... Um, that wasn't really to kind of... To, to play the game, really, at the time. I, I just wanted something that I just wanted to paint. I wanted to paint something, basically. And um, I've always loved Malifaux minis. I can kind of pop... Like a... Like a like I can kind of read about Malifaux. I can I can read up on the background and the law and listen to the podcasts and all that kind of stuff to kind of give me a little bit of inspiration and it was all that kind of stuff really. So I bought them back. I think it was back in October. I bought them. Um, I think I showed them off a while ago. I bought the um, like I said before. I, I bought the the rule book. I bought this Lady Justice set and I bought the Pandora, the Halloween special edition one. 
and they're just just to paint open like I say I bought the rule book just to just to read basically because the actual rules themselves are free online so if you if you want to have a look at the rules for Malifaux they're free just to download them but but the the free rules don't have the uh, the kind of like the law in the background in so um yeah that was that was the plan mate really just to just why not I love the minis there's loads of different let me just zoom back into this one I love the minis there's loads of different um lot of like styles and themes and stuff in it so um yeah I just thought I'd I thought I'd paint them mate Peter says, is Malifaux still a diceless game? It is, mate. Yeah, somebody just said there, it's 54 cards. It is. I said 52 cards. I meant to take a normal deck of cards. But yeah, you do use the black and red joker as well. Um, Luke's in there. They make some great minis with fabulous poses. There's just there's just such a, um, a mix of different models. I mean, Weird Miniatures, when they first started, started as a miniatures company. And, and they were just sculpting random minis, basically, for people to paint. And then they ended up with such a like a, a wide range of minis, they decided to create a game. But there was nothing really linking the minis together so much, so they created this world of Malifaux, where you could have like kind of Wild West gunslingers and gremlins living out in the swamps, and you could have like sort of nightmarish kind of sort of horror creatures and stuff like that. And they managed to kind of weave this really interesting world around it that kind of pulled it all together. Um... Phil says, looking forward to the law video. Hope you're well. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, so t tomorrow's video, the video I've done, is basically five amazing miniature game law that aren't Warhammer. Because everyone knows Warhammer's got amazing background and stuff, and everybody knows all about the, um, like, sort of Horus Heresy and the, the Age of Sigmar books and all that kind of stuff. But I think people forget there's some other games out there that have really, really, like, rich background. So, yeah, so I've picked five of my favourites. Uh, and I've um, it's a little bit longer than normal. It's about 25 minute video, so you can watch it in chunks. You can you can kind of watch it in a bit, or stick it as a stick it as a podcast in the background type thing. But it's um it's uh yeah, I spend about five minutes on each of the five games, just kind of giving you a bit of information about the background, sort of um a little bit where where's the best place to go to find out more if you're interested. So yeah, that's that's tomorrow's video. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite proud of it. I mean, it's, it sounds a bit kind of big-headed, but it's, it's it's taken me like a, like nearly a week to put it together. I've had to research it. I've had to read up all the different backgrounds to make sure it's right. I had to script it out. Um, like I think I wrote something like eight thousand words for the video. Um, so it's not like it's the hard work to do. And then obviously I've got to I've got to make it interesting visually as well. So I've had to go and search out. Um, like loads of uh, artwork and stuff like that, and and animate it all and, and put it all together. So yeah, it's been quite. It's, it, it was a harder video to make than I expected, if I'm honest, but a, a really kind of enjoyable one. So it's a good job I like editing. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's took me about two days to edit it, and it's still not finished. I still have to sort of finish it off tomorrow. Um, Lord Maiden, yeah, 54 card deck, that's right James Bray, good evening to you mate, how are you doing? Peter says, I just found the Malifaux set, it's the Guild's Judgment Which I saw in the window of a charity shop for a few quid The Guild's Judgment, ah, nice one mate, I, I think it's it, it might be the Lady Justice box From last, from, um, what do you call it, from um, From Mark II, it might be that Lady Justice box in which case, mate, it's uh, it's nice models. Not that there's any bad models, to be fair. Whichever one you've got will be nice models. But, uh, yeah, that, so the, the, the guild are essentially kind of like a, like a self-appointed kind of police force type thing, really. Uh, I wouldn't say they were the good guys, but they're, um, they're, they're trying to kind of, they're trying to be like the law and order and, and control stuff. Both on this side of the of the breach, and on the Malifaux side as well. So, be more. Yeah, I'll explain more in tomorrow's video. Um, 
James Bray said his first paint in front of while these streams definitely give an extra nudge. Do you know what it is, mate? They give they give me a nudge as well. That was exactly one of the reasons why I started doing them. And like it's a case of like I'm gonna at the time I was painting a lot of stuff for videos and stuff. And it's like if I'm gonna sit and paint and I set it up as a stream, I'll keep coming back every week as well and I'll I'll kinda it'll keep me on the track. Um so yeah, it's it, it definitely gives me a nudge as well, mate. Don't worry about that. Right, let's uh, is that red still wet? Yeah, I'll we'll go back and put a bit more of the red on here as well, just keep building it up. In fact, I'll go with a bit of a bigger brush. We'll just keep building these layers up basically just to get it nice and rich. And then it's not it's it's not kind of heavy enough that it obscures the kind of like the pre-shading but it just builds up the richness of the of the red but yeah these are i mean the, the models are, i would say i mean if you're used to painting things like marines and stuff these probably feel a little bit small in comparison but if you if you've painted kind of like wild west exodus stuff um then it's kind of you're on you're on par with that kind of stuff really. Wild West Exodus might be slightly bigger, I think. But uh but I mean these are not tiny. I think it's just when you're used to painting marines which are oversized or kind of like Stormcast or something. Or big kind of or Oryx for Warcry or something like that. Um yeah, these these may feel a bit small in comparison. Right, we'll tidy that uh that t-shirt up once uh once that dries up a little bit i'm coming with a bit of skin tone uh, Tony in deadlands rpg had a card mechanic that used a standard deck of cards it's downfall really relied on you being able to understand poker and card games i've not not heard of deadlands mate uh peter says i believe blood and plunder uses cards to an extent and tribal by mana press uses a regular deck it's a skirmish game for tribal combat. I've not heard of that, mate. I mean, um, there's there's plenty of games use like cards, as in like a, a, like a card deck type thing, like or a, um, you know, like card mechanics, if you like. But to use like a, a card deck, like a playing card deck, I think it's quite relatively unusual. Anyway, certainly in mainstream games. Um, Lord Maiden said, all the models are usable, even if the model went away in the law. Dead Man's Hand set, set had them updated. Nicodem, Ramos, Lilith all died and got stuck in a predicament, but still playable. Yeah, you, you basically, I don't think you can play them in like events or tournaments, but they're, um, they're still playable. They're still playable kind of characters in the game, so you can still use them and things. Which I think is good. Um, you just get a little bit of this flayed one flesh. We'll start off with quite a... Uh, Quite a light flesh colour, I think. Something tells me she'd be quite li light skinned, I think. Um, Tony says, uh, bless her, Kirsten has been exhausted. She's done unusual, awesome work. Yeah, I mean, obviously we, we hear from Kirsten because she comes in the chat normally late on on a Wednesday after work and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think I think all the Mantic folks have been uh, have been pretty flat out. But it's nice to get the kind of, to get it from the horse's mouth, if you like, to be able to speak to her and... Uh, and just kind of and say thank you as well i think we don't always get a chance to say thank you to the folks who were on the other side of it uh james says i like the look of a martyr but i'm quite surprised by the popularity of it i wonder if like indomitless it was helped by a lockdown fever people want something new i'm not sure it is mate because um i think with indomitless is you know i think that was like ninth edition kind of like the hype type thing most of the things is not like if you think about like some Kickstarters and stuff haven't gone so well. There's other companies have released new stuff. It's not like being huge. I think it was just maybe it was just a case of right, right timing for, for it as well. It's it was it was time to have something a little bit different. I mean, I really enjoyed painting up these ships. I need to get my old ones finished, but I, I've been really enjoying painting them up. Just something a little bit different from painting kind of like human type models all the time. Um. And I, th I think it was just because at the end of the day, I mean, if ship games were that were sort of mega popular, then people like, I mean, the, the perfect example is the fact that it's based on Black Seas. 
people would just buy Black Seas if they really wanted it. I think it's the idea of something like the ships being that little bit different, being a bit more fantasy inspired, a little bit less serious if you like. I think there's an element of that with it as well. So yeah, I think there's definitely an element of right, right place, right time. And I think also the fact that like Dystopian Wars has been delayed a little bit. Um, there's no signs of kind of Man of War coming back uh, anytime soon. So I think people are just, people are ready for a, for a bit of fantasy naval combat. Uh, Tissy Braindrain, good evening mate, how are you doing? Um, where was this one? Um, uh, oh, where was this one again? Wow, that, that, that jumped off fast there when I just uh, scrolled down. Let me go back and find out. Um... Lord Maiden saying, sorry I don't mean to be picky over things, as Blackjack said, it's hard to stream and remember things fully. Oh, don't, don't worry about me, I've got a memory like a sieve when it comes to most stuff. I rely upon you lot to kind of keep me right half the time. So yeah, don't worry, don't worry about collect, correcting me, that's for sure. Um, I'm always happy to be to stand corrected if I've got something wrong. I know enough to get me into trouble basically, that's, <laughs> that's normally uh, my, my, my biggest issue. I know enough to talk about it, but not enough to be an expert. So, right, let's get a bit of skin on here. Yes, we're at stage, folks, where it's like, oh my god, what have I done? But it'll all come together at the end. It's just because this is a really thin going over that. I didn't want to put it on too thick, basically, so you're getting a lot of kind of... Uh, of the black showing through at the moment. I think I might have thinned that paint a little too much as well, which doesn't help. Put a bit of skin tone at the tummy there. Try and get the brush in from a bit of a funny angle. I'll tidy that one up once it's dry. Right. Um, yeah, those those weird those weird symbol things. I've got no idea what they're for. I mean, um, it's not got no idea, folks. Uh, Peter saying, "Well, I got German grenadiers and U.S. Airborne as well, and Marine Corps and Japanese. We really want to do it early war. Well, mate, that's plenty going." Uh, James is saying, "I don't have a YouTube membership with you anymore. I did once." Um, James Britt, how's, oh, according to this, you, you did like a minute ago, you, your name was green before, and now it's not, I wonder if it's just ended or something like that, but the symbol's gone as well, I don't know what that is, mate, that, that's kind of weird, so, interesting, I thought before it might, it might have been of how long you've been a YouTube kind of member or something, but Tony's is there as well, those are the symbols I put in, I don't know what those ones are. Um, but yeah, like it's it was there and now it's gone, mate. Wherever it was, um, Peter's is saying his is normal. Tony's is normal as well. Others must have caught it something. I I thought it might have been something to do with how long, mate. But I, I I'm not really sure. Um, Clinton, the other game mechanic that makes Malifaux fun is the hidden objectives. I like trying to bluff one while scoring the other. Yeah, I, I remember that as well, mate. I think did that come in end of first? End of first edition, it might have started coming. Where you had hidden objectives, I think. I think it's changed now. But originally, when I played it, you could you could choose to keep them secret, and you got extra points for them if you got them off. I don't think that's the case now. But yeah, it's it's like some cool. There's some cool mechanics in the games. I'm going to have to tidy up that. Those hands a bit as well, I think. But we'll get that with uh, with the washers and stuff. Right, we'll let that dry for a second. Um, 
Blizzard says, love the law of Malifaux. Got a ton of breach side broadcast on my phone and listen to some each night. I listen to it all the time as well, mate. I've gone back through to through the old uh, the old archives and listen to it from the start again as well. If anybody is interested in stuff as well, the the, the Malifaux third edition app, um, which has got all of the cards in it, has all of the breach side broadcasts in it as well. Um, Beauty scene looks like an S symbol. It does look like a bit like an S, mate. I don't even know how to Google it to find out what it is. Somebody, somebody, Google it for me, will you? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have a quick look on my phone um, and see if see if anything crops up on here. See why uh, S symbol next to name in YouTube chat. Let's see what it says. Um. Uh, I was talking about the uh, it's weird it's not like it's a super chat thing or anything like that I don't know what it is I don't know what it is weird I'm sure we'll find out though we'll do some digging tomorrow um, I can't even see the symbol see what to see where it is um, yeah, James has gone back to Grail. I wonder if it's just like literally just like ended its uh, um, the the um, the membership thing right there and then. Um, Scott says, really can't wait to play in Malifaux while I'm waiting on a bunch of stuff to actually turn up. Yeah, Tizzy Brindu says, so let let me ask. Speaking of Malifaux, has anyone here played Into the Breach? It's the pen and paper RPG set in the Malifaux universe. I've I've, I've never played. Um, I've never played those um, those ones before, to be honest. Um, that, that any RPG stuff other than what Christian took me through, so I, I haven't read it. But it is one of those books where I'm, I'm tempted just to pick it up just for the for more background lore type stuff. Um, yeah, Christian's just gone normal now as well. I wonder if it's the tail end of. Does it remember the super chat from last week or something like that? I've got no idea, mate. From from Monday rather. Um, Um, Luke's in his paint a couple of metal minis for the mini swap. Do people shy away from painting metal minis other than bros and badges? I've not had any paint for ages. I don't, mate. I am. Um, I painted all my uh, Infinity stuff. They were all metal, no problems. It's just you. It just you treat them the same. By, by the time you've got um, primer on them, they're pretty much the same as far as I'm concerned, mate. Um, Lobinsy the Dreamer is a great character, a boy who's on Earth, but when he dreams, his spirit goes to the land of Malifaux. And his dreams become reality. A tyrant found him and took him in. It, it, there's just some weird, like kind of like killer teddy bears and stuff like that. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, Tasty Brindrin says, ooh, a law video. Yeah, definitely want to watch that. Law is something I'm really interested in. Um, yeah, I, I just thought it was something a bit different. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm caught at the minute. There's only so much I can... Um, I can make videos on on my own without like sort of getting somebody to help and play games. I can't review stuff because I'm not getting a chance to play stuff. So I thought I'm. I just. I need to. I need to be realistic and just. I need to do stuff I can do on my own and just do it to the best of my ability. So I thought I'd. I'd give the law stuff a go. Um, Scott says, "Who's that? Your painting? I love Delith. This is the Judge Mate from. Um, from. Uh, Lady Justice. From her. From her crew box. So yeah, I'm just. I'm painting there. Uh, I'm painting the Judge." And we've got some uh we've got some death marshals here as well to paint if we uh, if we finish this one so yeah um i'm just kind of just painting them just cause, just because i like them basically um lobin says now the dreamer's parents that died in the burning man event and grew sadistic his dreams become bigger and scarier and the tyrant grew fat with all the souls he's eaten, the um the burning man event thing is 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 something that's really interesting as well. So for those that kind of don't really know about Malifaux, essentially the way it, what it works, and some of this will come out in tomorrow's video, so I don't want to give too much. But there's, there's basically there's a breach opens up on Earth, which is a portal through to another dimension, which is Malifaux, um, and people start going through this portal to kind of to, to see what what Malifaux is. However, at some point in the future, an, another breach opens up, um, and and the inhabitants of Malifaux start coming back through to the Earth. And there's a there's a, a thing basically called um, the Burning Man, which is this thing in the sky basically. Um, and that's where we start to see um, 
Mal uh, Weird Games' other game, which is the other side, um, that basically is based around the uh, the Burning Man and uh, um, the breach opening up um, in London. This one, and it's uh, again the, the law is fantastic for that. Um, I think I think Weird are kind of planning to kind of relaunch the other side a little bit. I think it's um, they've had a few issues, obviously around timing with with COVID and everything else, and I think. There were some supply issues when it first came out. It was a little bit delayed the Kickstarter for it and things. So I think they're, um, I think they're planning to have a bit. I think there's a two-player box set. I saw they did like a Gen Con online kind of chat thing. And uh, yeah, I think there's a two-player box set coming for that, which, if I remember, can be used in Malifaux as well. So uh, that's maybe one to watch out for for those maybe wanting to dip their toe in in the future. A little bit. Right. What we'll do is we'll tidy up around them hands. And what we're going to do with the grey one here. Uh, Twenty. I remember when we were just starting out. We were chatting on a quite friendly, on an old Oz, Oz forum. Tiny souls. One of the forum members did their initial studio paint jobs. Yeah, I mean, um, Malif Malifaux came out back in 2009. So yeah, it's quite some time ago. Uh, and that, that was when I really first started playing miniatures games. I'd painted um, Warhammer stuff for a few years prior to that. But yeah, 2009 was when I started playing games. Um, and then when I was kind of going through my divorce and stuff, I, uh, I kind of stopped playing for a while. And that, and that was when later on I got back into it with the uh, with the Walking Dead. So when I, when I came back to stuff, but um, yeah, it's happy days. Happy days. So I'm just uh, very like just going around this, just to just to kind of go over the prime stuff with something just to. Dot it down. We'll, we'll, we'll get some metallics and things onto this eventually around the sword and stuff, but I just want to just tidy that up a touch. Um, Peter says, There is a female with a mask and a katana sword. I think that's. Is she kind of crouched down, mate, like with the sword across the top of her head, like off, off to the side? Because if, if it is. It's essentially it's the it's the older sculpt of this one, mate. The mask is essentially a, a blindfold, I think, if it's the same one. Um, right, I just want to get a little bit more of that red in where I've just missed a touch. Um, Scott said I had the limited ed edition Teddy. <laughs> Christian, your symbol's back again. What the hell's going on? Um, Luke said, I had a bunch of first edition Malifaux minis, two or three warbands and separate minis. I've gotten a deal at Salute, I think. Yeah, I, I, like I say, I've still got, uh, I've still got some um, of the first edition ones as well. Like I say, I'll, I'll dig them out and I'll, I'll pop them in the, in the Patreon or something like that. I did one where I painted, um, there's, a, there's one model which is a little bit like kind of Jack the Ripper type model called Seamus. Uh, and I painted them a little bit like kind of Uncle Sam with the, like the the stripy top hat and um, a little bit like a kind of like a circus like ringmaster type thing, which was an unusual paint job at the time. Like nobody else painted it like that, uh, and I was quite proud of that paint job. I, I kind of specifically took my time. I used to because you only have kind of eight ten models in, in a war bar in a in a crew for Malifaux. I used to just take my time and paint them. I, I I was never in any particular rush, but the crew I used to run the most often was um uh, was the showgirls. I used to uh, like that one with the cor the corophy, the, the dancing corophy, and the the mannequins, the showgirls, and Colette, the kind of like magician. Um, yeah, it was bring back happy memories. I remember going to my first ever tournament, uh, first ever gaming tournament was from Malifaux, Four, and I went to an event in Leeds. Um, yeah, happy happy days. Forget where it was in Leeds now. Um, but yeah, it was it was good. Had a good day out. 
I remember the Malifaux community used to be quite um, quite tight knit, like like friendly. I don't know what it's like these days. It's been a while since I've been in and around it. Um, good evening, uh, Steve. How are you doing, mate? No stuck in is the icon. Anything to do with popping some cash in the channel? I don't think so, mate. Otherwise, there'd be other people with it, with it as well. Um, Luke says, how did I survive all these years without this painting handle? <laughs> uh, Peter says, I guess I have to assemble them now and become a token point. It'll make a change from Stormcast night on. That's it, mate. Sometimes it's just nice just to have a bit of a change, isn't it? Just to do something a bit different. Um, right, what I'm going to do is I need to put a little bit more of the skin across the tummy there. Um, <laughs> Luke, uh, sorry, Busey's saying it could be something to do with crop circles and monoliths. It might be, mate. Everything that's going on at the minute. Um, Luke says there are lots of miniatures games that use a 52 card set, but Malifaux is the only one I know that's made it into the mainstream hobby. Lots of historical games do and grunts. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what I was kind of aiming at, really. I, I'm surprised it's not. I'm surprised other games haven't picked it up as an idea. Um, like I think when Malifaux did it, it was. Well, to be fair, it, it, it still is the only kind of, I say mainstream in inverted commas, but you know what I mean, like the more popular, more well-known game um, that uses a, a deck of cards. Obviously, Malifaux's, like, other game as well, uh, sorry, Weird Game's other game, which is the other side, also uses a, uh, a deck of cards as well. But, yeah, it's... Uh... Weird also do something about um, Penny Dreadful. Does anybody... Uh... Has anybody seen that stuff? Is it is it just like is it just novels? Is it is it a game? I must admit I've not really looked into it yet. I just saw it on the website when I was looking for something else. Um, <laughs> it's kind of freaking me out for it being marked. I'd love to know what it is, mate. I'd love to know. Um, I'll have I'll have a check out tomorrow and see what it is. Um. People having a bit of a chat there. Um, Lord Technopants said something. Busey, thank you very much, mate. I didn't, uh, I didn't see that you'd, uh, you donated there, mate. Thank you very much. It doesn't appear to have given you a weird symbol thing, though, does it? Um. Uh, why on earth? Wow, that was that was that. I said sometimes when this jumps, it doesn't half jump as well. Um, there we go. I think we're back to where I was now. There we are. Lord Technopants says, if games are going to have no dice, how am I going to, to going to be convinced that I need to be buying three or four unnecessary fancy sets? What, what you do then is, mate, you you get convinced that you need more than one deck of cards, which is exactly what I got into when I when I was playing Malifaux. I think I had about four or five different kind of themed decks. Um, <laughs> just because of that. Um, um, Scott he's got all three of the naval games done by Warlord. I've got um, Cruel Seas and never even put the stuff together, mate. The rule book was an absolute mess and I couldn't be asked to try and uh, fight it. Um, Tasty Brain Drain says Deadlands has a great law. It's a weird West setting. Magic and steampunk meets Wild West. Uh, I'm ne I think I see it. Never heard of it. I'll have, to, I'll have to look into that one. Um, Scott says on Dystopian Wars, War Cradle pretty much confirmed it's coming soon, and I quote, very early next year. Yeah, I, I knew it was coming soon, mate. I think it was just a case of, like, it, it was meant to be earlier, and I think when people were maybe kind of hanging, hope, hoping for that was going to come along, and it didn't, maybe some people just decided to sort of take a bite and uh, and pick up a martyr. Looks and it makes you wonder if there's not been at least a conversion or conversation at GW based on the popularity of a martyr. Must be a couple of people within the company that would be championing such a game. Do you know what, mate? I, I'm sure they all kind of like, you know, they, they must look around and see what's popular, see what's happening in other areas and stuff. Because, um, like, Dreadball for Mantic was, was hugely successful, like, back when it was first launched. And it was at a time when, basically, like, GW weren't given any lip service at all to Blood Bowl. Um, so they must have come up, there must come a point where they went, oh, hang on a second, like... People are making big money out of stuff that, that we used to own, like sort of um, sort of sports games type stuff. And I think I think the similar things types of like it's part of the reason why they've brought back a lot of their old stuff. I think they see other companies making money. It's the same with with the old world stuff. I think they see people making money out of fantasy miniatures, like fantasy rank and flank stuff, and they probably think, uh, you know, we sh we should have a hand in that type thing. 
Um, um, Tony said I got rid of a lot of my old metal stuff, which I regret. Most wasn't JW either. It was being hobby butterfly even in the early 2000s. Yeah, I tend not to get rid of stuff. Like, I've still got loads of stuff lying around in boxes and that. Um, but to be honest, I, I would sell it if I thought anybody wanted it. I think the only thing I've really kind of shifted on was I sold all of my 40k stuff when I first had my first demo game and, and didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I sold it all off to buy other stuff. Um, and I sold my... I sold all of my um, War Machine and Horde stuff. I had a like a Battle Foam um, Hordes bag that was absolutely full to the brim with... Uh, all painted stuff uh, and I sold all that off as well basically at, at a time when I, when I needed the money basically like I said before I was I was getting divorced and stuff I was trying to there was a point in time where I was paying for three houses at the same time so basically we we had a house that we lived in um, that we were that we were in the process of selling I had a house that I rented out uh, that, I, that I owned which was essentially like my pension thing like for when I got old um, and then, and, and then basically, what happened was the person, the house sale slipped, so the person that was renting it moved out. So I had to pay the mortgage for that. The house, obviously, the house with, with my ex-wife and the kids living in it, I was paying the mortgage on that. And because of all, everything had kind of slipped, I'd already moved out. I, I'd rented a flat, and I had, I had to kind of pay the the first month's rent like in advance as well. So I, I, there was a period in time where I was like literally playing like three, three mortgages at that time. Um, so yeah, I needed all the money I could get my hands on. So I sold all my, I sold all my um, a lot of my miniature stuff back then. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really regret it. I wouldn't be playing it now, but uh, um, yeah, it was. That's the only time I've really kind of sold anything like sort of like that. Um, um, Tasty Brain Drain saying sadly only played once what so while I liked it and not the best person to comment on how it plays. Um let's scroll down here. Luke said just noticed you have music on the background. <laughs> yes, mate, yes. I have done for the last three or four, I think, painting streams, I think. It was just so that when I'm kind of when I go a bit quiet and I'm just kind of sort of like sitting concentrating on something, it's not just dead air really. Um Scott says, is it not super chat as symbols? No, I don't, no, it's not made, it's the super chat things are a completely different thing. And there was there was loads of people super chatted on Monday. Um, so loads of them would, would have had the symbol if that was the case. And busy has been the only one that's done it tonight. So um, yeah, it's definitely not that. <laughs> Palm she's saying, I've just Googled it. You don't want to know, but it involves the CIA. You can't do it in here. Um, uh, Tony says, "Army paint a grey surface primer tastes vile." <laughs> Forgot I was priming lick my brush. Ugh. Yeah, Christian, see, I tried Google. It's disappeared again, mate. It's disappeared again. I wonder what the hell it is. I thought it was a birthday thing until I saw James had it before. I tried googling it, nothing comes up. Weird, mate. Uh, Lucy, I shall absolutely be watching this new video tomorrow of yours while working. Uh, very intrigued as to what you picked and whether I might not have heard of any. Um, it'll probably go live about seven o'clock tomorrow night, mate. And that's my normal time. I, I set stuff live. It's kind of um, you can look into the analytics of YouTube, and it'll tell you kind of when most of your audience are online, and and sometime between kind of half six and seven o'clock, my videos tend to do better when I do that. I've, I've been, you've probably seen recently. I've been trying like two videos a day. I've tried not posting for a while to see what effect it has. Um, I've tried kind of doing them at lunchtime. I've been trying a few different things just to see how the uh, how it affects stuff. And one thing I do know is if, if you've got a video, and this is this is why it's tough when you've got a schedule. If you've got a video that's doing pretty well, um, the worst thing you can do is upload another video or, or go live because it, it kind of interrupts the um, it interrupts the way YouTube share it out. Unfortunately, but it's just the way it is. So yeah, you, you, if if a video is starting to climb in its views, you can kind of, you can you can almost like kill it off by. So let's let's just say Monday's video was doing really well. Monday's live stream was getting loads more views, and then I go live tonight on Wednesday. It almost stops sharing the the old video. It's weird the way it works, but it is what it is. Control the things you can control. 
and don't worry about the things you can't. Um, just the thinnest I touch. Um, Tony says a lot of his were odd, limited edition stuff, pre Malifaux, weird stuff, Dark Edge. Yeah, the Brom inspired sci fi. Alice and the Cheshire Cat, a few French companies. Was it some of the, 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 the Rackham stuff, mate? Was it? I remember the Rackham stuff was kind of. Uh, they were a French company, weren't they? Uh, but there was, a, there was a lot of that stuff around back then. I mean, there's still some kind of boutique type stuff around. But companies definitely seem more. Like they seem, they seem to struggle a bit more now. When, when they're just miniature companies, you don't see half the stuff that you used to. It was much more kind of boutique, and I, but I do wonder how much of that was down to like the quality um, versus being able to kind of like cast in a shed and stuff like that, sort of back then. I know you can still cast now, but I wonder whether the level of the sculptors is getting better and it's less of a hobby industry these days. Right, let that dry off a little bit. I'll tell you what we'll do while we're waiting. I'll do a little bit of, where is it? Rhinox hide on the base. Um, Radek, good evening Radek, how are you doing? It says, read TTB, will play soon. It is fresh but complex. TTB. I don't know what TTB is, mate. Um, if it's complex, mate, <laughs> it's probably, probably not my uh, my kind of thing. ASDF says, if you click on the dollar symbol, the strange S symbol is next to the join option. The strange X. I don't know what it is then, mate. Weird, weird, weird. No, I think that's a different one. Isn't it? I don't get to see it on my own channel, so I can't see it, mate. Um. <laughs> Pomsy. Pomsy saying the S symbol means you've downloaded the six in the head zine. That's what it is, mate, yeah. Uh, Paul says, metal miniatures are best miniatures. Change my mind. I don't re I'm not a huge fan of metal minis, if I'm honest. I find them a pain in the ass to clean up. I find them a pain in the ass to kind of, to stick together. Um, I don't like the fact that they tend to be a little bit top heavy on the bases and um, so they're quite easy to knock over because you've got light plastic bases and then sometimes top heavy minis but um, in saying that um, it doesn't make them poorer quality I just rather have plastic or resin uh, any day really uh, I also do, you tend to find paint chips off them a bit easier as well so yeah, I'm not sure I'm changing your mind, mate, but that's my opinion on it anyway. Um, Steve said he's painting some US Airborne for bolt action tonight. Plastic at the moment, but we're adding metals too. Um, Tasty Brain Drain saying about the breach. Like, oh, I'm half an hour behind now. Let me have a bit of a catch up here. Scott said about the weird sculpts. Um... Pomsy saying the first metal models he did with the Pirates of the Dread Sea liked them nice weight to them. There is a nice there is a nice weight to metal minis, but I think you just like when they're quite slight, that's fine. But like some of the um like war machine stuff I had, like some of the uh like the Jackson stuff, the slightest little kind of nudge and they were they, they just felt like they were kind of they were gonna go over. There was one what particular one that I had for uh for my troll for my troll bloods. And it was it was an awful model. I had to like weight the base of it to try and stop it from falling over. Um, Jameson, he spent quite a bit of time in London and seen some of the people. I think the breach is very real. Um, uh, James, yeah, James is uh, things back again. He said he just should get his copy of June Imperium. He said his icons back. Uh, no, it's not. Who? What on earth? It's obviously some kind of glitch thing. It must be, mustn't it? Um, Luke said he's waiting for aliens another glorious day in the core um, <laughs> it's got to be something to do with um, some link to being a YouTube member or something like that 
because there's the only two people that's had it that have been or are or, or YouTube members. I don't know why that is. Um, Peter said he's happy with the icon he has, and if it changes, be upset. It might change, mate. I think the longer you're a member, um, it changes colours. But I have to keep uploading the different colours. I didn't think anybody would stay long enough, so I only did three. I think um, I'll have to change. I'll have to put upload some new colours soon. Um. <laughs> Good evening, Barry Kleiber. How are you doing, mate? Um, where was that one? Somebody. Uh, Bloody hell. Um, there we are. Jim said, I just dropped a plastic mini and broke a bit of it, so it's not just metal models. No, it's not just that bit. Um, Relax says, Penny Dreadful scenarios for the RPG. Ah, is that what they are, mate? Um, I, 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 keep seeing the, um, I keep seeing the books and stuff online, but I didn't know what they were. Um... Google says if you super chat $100, you get a special symbol. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it must be, mate. That's why it keeps coming and going, mate. <laughs> um, right, we'll let that one dry a little bit before I go any further with it. It's just, it, it's not far off done, to be fair. It just needs a bit of tidying up. The face needs a bit more detail on it. Um, and the, the coat probably needs, let's put another, another coat of the red on there, I think, on the jacket. And then we'll, we can highlight it up a little bit as well, just to brighten it up. Let's move out of the way so I don't knock it over. Um, Lord Ben says, didn't you do you make a fantasy ship based game? Yeah, that's the one, mate. I was just talking about it. It was called Man of War. Um, and people keep talking about it coming back. But I think the reason they keep talking about it coming back is because, like, Necromunda came back and... Um, Aeronautica, Imperialis came back, and Blood Bowl came back. So I think people keep expecting it to come back at some point. Um, whether it does or not, I have no idea, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, their, their release schedules are just on a different level to everybody else's. Um, the amount of staff they've got, obviously, they can... They can certainly uh, they can certainly put new stuff out quite regularly, but yeah, it, it's it's phenomenal. I mean, regardless of whether you like their stuff or you don't, or you, or you play it, or you think it's expensive, or whatever the case may be, you can't you can't um, you can't kind of knock them as a business for just how much stuff they physically release. It, it might be too much. <laughs> you, you might not agree with it, but it's still um, it's still a a massive feat. And, and as somebody who worked in manufacturing and kind of product development for for basically most of my work in life um up, up until this point of course um yeah it's there's so many moving parts when it comes to kind of manufacturing and marketing and finance and everything else like i know every other company has the same things but you tend to get things done faster in a smaller company so the size that gw is um, with shareholders as well, because when you've got shareholders, it's a whole different ball game about getting things approved. Um, um, it's it's phenomenal, really. But like I say, it doesn't really matter whether you like their stuff or not. As a business, they uh, they seem to they seem to have it under control. Um, <laughs> I've read it had a ten percent chance. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Paul said, anyone tried Deadlands Noir? It's Deadlands set in advanced in the 1920s. No, I've just seen before, mate. I don't know whether you heard. I've never even heard of Deadlands. Um, David Mackay says, the weird S symbol is a members-only content for the channel. Members-only content? I've got no idea what that means, mate, to be fair. Uh, uh, Christians has gone again. I tell you what did happen the other night, folks. On Monday, when when a few people donated on the live stream after we'd done the um, the the um, the what's it called again? Fighting fantasy thing. It, it it was glitching like mad. It was like it was as if people had paid like three or four times. Um, I mean, obviously, it never come through that much. I only, it only got paid the once, but it, it kept pinging up again and again and again. So I wonder if there's some glitches in YouTube at the moment. Um, 
Uh, Christian sharing the link there as well for Goblin Gaming. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, I, I bought these from Goblin Gaming, 20% off off the price as well. So you um, save a little bit of money. But yeah, that's where these ones were from. Came the next day. I was really happy with the service from those guys. Um, right, I need to I need to do something with that face, I think. Just to try and uh, sort of tidy it up a little bit. Um, let's try and skip up some of this stuff. Tom Ferris, good evening. This is Howdy from Texas, brother. Painting the new Necromantic Blood Bowl team. Nice one, mate. Good choice. Uh, Tony says, you all cry, you all cried. Due to my condition, I couldn't face selling stuff. So I threw my minis in the bin. Even now, I'd rather give stuff away as I don't feel okay about selling it. I'll tell you, it, it, yeah, it's a personal thing, mate. Isn't it? Everybody's, um, everybody's got their own ways of doing stuff, mate. But, yeah, you sh It's... It's a, it's a tough one, mate. I, I understand uh, when you don't feel like you can, uh, you don't feel like you want to be kind of hassled with selling stuff and that. Um, Tasty Brain Drain says, you probably like Deadlands since you like Wild West Exodus. Because, well, to me, anyway, Wild West Exodus feels like it was influenced by Deadlands. Uh, interesting. I will have to do some reading about it, mate, then. Scott started his 3D printing. Nice one, fella. You're doing your droid army. Very nice. Just uh, wash my brush here. Um, Neil Chisling, comma, 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 comma. Not comma comedian there, I'm not starting to sing anything, but yeah, nice to see you, Neil. Um, <laughs> Luke says, didn't we all get an injection for TTV when we were kids? <laughs> Through the breach, of course, mate, that's the one. I didn't recognize the, 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 it, I didn't recognize it by its initials, but yes, that's what TTV is. Through the breach, yes, through the breach is, uh, is the RPG bit based in the Malifaux world? Yeah, I, to be honest, I wouldn't mind having a look, just even just having a look at the book for that to see what it's like. Because obviously, I know it's an RPG, but there must be a load of uh, a load of background stuff in there as well. What I'm finding at the minute is like obviously I can't play games at the moment, uh, and and it looks like for quite some time if they if the current things keep up. Uh, current restrictions so I'm kind of just I'm just looking at ways to just to expand my kind of um, my game and knowledge my game and horizons if you like and and I'm finding I'm getting into like reading law and listening to listening to kind of like listening to podcasts but not just necessarily people sitting talking about a game like talking about the law or, or background stories or I'm just finding that uh, scratching a bit of an itch at the minute so and it's also kind of it's making me it's giving me ideas for painting projects to get things ready for when i can game again as well so so yeah that's that's kind of why i thought i'd uh i'd do a bit of a law video tomorrow really just to try something a bit different see what people think about it there's plenty of channels of basically sort of um have been created just off the back of only doing law stuff so but it tends to be 40k stuff to be fair but i just thought yeah well let's let's just see what people think of it let's see if there's like i've give like the video is like kind of it's enough to kind of give you the background and um, like an abridged version um but obviously if you want to know more that like it's not going to spoil the story for you but if people are interested in, I, I quite enjoyed it really i quite enjoy just recording the audio stuff um if people are interested I'd, ha I'd happily kind of do more of that stuff. So so give me some feedback tomorrow, folks, if you watch it. Um, Tony says it was a golden age for minis in the early 2000s. Very much a painter's wet dream these days. The quality's ramped up, but they're very samey. Um, I think when you say the samey, I think there's a lot of uh, commonality of, of like, I'll buy this to play in X game kind of thing. So I think... There's a financial reason, I think, why why there's a lot of similarity and stuff these days. Um, um, uh, 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 what was that one? ASDF says, could anyone tell me what issues of Mortal Realms has the terrain that was in the starter? Somebody will tell you, mate. They mentioned it on the live stream the other week. And that, um, 
I forgot which one it is, but some somebody will tell you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> this is really it's massive jump ahead there. Um, er nine ten. Good evening, mates. Says greetings from a partly cloudy Phoenix. Um, <laughs> Peter says, "Man of War." You probably mean Dread Fleet. <laughs> James Brady says, "I can't believe Andy never mentions the hundred pound super chats I do every few minutes." That's what's keeping the lights on me. I'll be honest. Thanks very much. Um, uh, bit of chat there. Bit of chat going back and forwards. Uh, and Pomsey saying, "Not my fault. You can't handle your drink, Peter Nicholas." I don't know what that was about. Uh, and Tasty Brain Drain saying, uh, "I actually like the card mechanic because I like poker and I use something else." The dice is all that. Yeah, I, li I like a game of poker as well. Um, but uh, Poker Legacy is, is, a, is a garbage name for a channel. So. Uh, let me just get a button of focus there. Ian says, I'm trying to get as many armies done as I can for when things open up, but work is still keeping me pretty busy. Still hopefully going to end up with three projects complete. Uh, Neil Chising says, sorry, did the comments by accident. <laughs> Don't worry about that, mate. Don't worry about that. He said, what law is your favourite? I, I honestly think probably Malifaux law, mate. I think it's probably my favourite. Um, I don't want to give too much away because I talk about my five... My five favourites, really. So, the, like I said, like tomorrow, the video I've got, um, I, I still I need to put a little bit of music, a little bit of audio music in the background, and I need to finish the thumbnail for it. But the the recording and the kind of the editing's all finished. Other than that, um, so yeah, barring any kind of major disasters, it'll be up at about seven o'clock tomorrow night. Um, and essentially, what I've what I've done is I've put together a, a video which talks about the basic law for five games that I think have amazing background law, uh, like amazing law that aren't Warhammer, because obviously everyone knows about the Warhammer stuff. So it's, it, it was point, pointless me spending any time telling you about Warhammer. And, it, and it's more kind of designed as if we're, we're not getting games in at the moment or we're not getting as many games as we'd like to. So, you know, maybe, maybe you'd like to kind of find out, maybe it's, even if you never want to play these games, you might just like like the setting of the game, and maybe you wanna maybe you wanna buy a book, or you wanna listen to a podcast, or kind of just to, even just to give you some kind of inspiration to maybe paint something different. So that's the kind of that's the background behind the video, really. That's that's why it's that's what I'm doing. So, but yeah, I I, I would honestly say Malifaux is definitely in my top one or two when it comes to background law. Um, I've always kind of kept up on the background for that game. Uh, even when I've not been playing it, I just and, I, and listen to podcasts and stuff. I just find it really, uh, it's just really different. It, it's not just kind of endless war. Like a, like a lot of a lot of background stories for things are just endless, endless war basically. And and this is not. This is more about the kind of like the the little secret societies and things. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Peter says, best law and theme in a miniatures board game, hands down, Mice and Mystics. Mice and Mystics, eh? Um, Clint says, I'd be happy to see more Malifaux content. Initially, mate, I wasn't going to do any Malifaux content. I um, I was going to just keep this as like a little sort of, not like a secret thing, but just just as, just for my like little um, sort of background, sort of hobby type thing away from, away from content. But then the longer this lockdown stuff gone on and stuff, it's like... If I'm if I'm reading about it, if I'm kind of painting up the minis and stuff in my spare time, I might as well kind of do some content on it really. So so that's essentially what's really happening. Um, so yes, Clint, we'll we'll certainly have more more Malifaux stuff, mate. Because uh, like in comparison to some other games, like there there are some games where if you're not playing the game. There's not a huge amount to talk about, and then there's other games where the law and the background is so kind of interesting and rich. You can you can talk about you can talk about them from a even like from an RPG kind of point of view, like the fact that it's like there's an interesting story in there. You can talk about them. So yeah, what we'll probably do one week is we'll probably do a Monday night kind of dedicated to Malifaux. You know, a little bit like I did with Wild West Exodus and how I've done with like Vanguard and stuff. We'll probably do one for Malifaux about like, about what do you need to know and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, watch watch out for that at some point. Just need to tidy that 
try that up a little bit. Oops, that's not how to tidy it up. That's how to make it worse. <laughs> Uh, Ariel, good evening Ariel, says for Christmas I'm giving my, a Malifaux crew box and a spiral bound rule book to each of my two gaming mates, hopefully if I can get something started, that's very kind of you mate, I hope they appreciate that. Pomsey said, I, oh sorry, uh, Peter saying about um, Mice and Mystics, every scenario comes with a nice piece of story, ideal to play with a young one, mine is painted and ready to go for when my little one is up for it. That's nice, mate. Um, Pomsey, I don't think I'd be into a game, but not buy the minis at least. Like, I'm, a, I'm into the idea of Blood Bowl, but I don't really follow it because I don't own it. Um, I think what more what I'm kind of getting at is, mate, is, like, there are a lot of people who just buy Horus Heresy books but have absolutely no interest in ever playing the game. They just they read it as, like, a purely from a, a background kind of law, like, something to read, basically. Um... Uh, and the point is that, that like, there, there are lots of games out there that you might say, oh, I'm, I'm not getting into another game, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. But the background to those, the, the, there's such a rich background that actually, if you just wanted something to read, like if you, or, or to listen to, is a, is a completely uh, different, um, something sort of new, if you like. There are some great games out there, and that, that's kind of the point, really. Um Right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of an Agrax, Agrax wash over those trousers to try and darken down the uh, the recesses a little bit more. Um, Tony says, the poker thing doesn't work for me. It's all based on bluffs and lies. Not great for an Aspie. Sadly, when we try to explain poker, they wrap it in untruths and misdirection, so it makes no sense. To be honest, mate, poker's not... It's not necessarily about bluffs. Um, it can be once. Once the problem with it is, is, is people who are not very good at poker rely upon bluffing and basically trying to pretend. But good poker players very rarely bluff. To be honest, they kind of play the odds and the uh, and they under, they understand the kind of like the math side of it and and like. You'll be you'll do all right, kind of bluffing against players who are not very good. But if you're playing against somebody who knows what they're doing, and you're trying to bluff like you've got a good hand, and that poker player will kind of just say, like, well, the the odds of them having a better based upon what's out on the river, um, like there's there's no chance they've got a good hand, so they're just bluffing. And then what they'll do is they'll keep pushing them until they basically put all their money in and, and realize that they've they've lost everything because you basically get caught in the bluff so i think people think poker is more about bluffing than it actually is i think it's part of the mystery of it like it's, it's almost this kind of like trying to make it this cool thing about it about like secret bluffing and all that kind of stuff and, and actually in reality it's much more kind of maths and statistics based um neil says you should get blood bowl it's the best gw game ever I'll tell you what, Neil. I couldn't agree with you there, mate. I'm not a fan of Blood Bowl. I, I like Blitz Bowl, but I'm not a fan of Blood Bowl. But I, I, I do appreciate other people enjoy it. So it's just not my just not my cup of tea. Um right, that's a, bit of, a little bit of uh, apothecary white there across the top there as well, just to try and get a bit more shade to it. I'll decide what I'm going to do with the bases. I think when I've finished all the models, I've just I kind of put the the ground onto it. Right, we need a little bit of uh, a bit of silver, I think now. Uh, James says I had a member of the government that you may well have heard of send me an instant message and ask what chapter of Space Marines I collect because he had that blackjack marine I did behind me in the video conference. <laughs> I'm sure Boris loves a blackjack marine, mate. <laughs> I'm sure he does. When he said he was isolating for two weeks, mate, because he'd been in contact with somebody, he was just stopping in to paint his army. 
That's all it was. Right, let's get a little bit of detail on some of this now. Pick out things like the buckle on the belt and Has she got a gun in her pocket there? Or is she just by the place to see me? No, that's not what I was gonna say. Right, we'll just put a little bit of a really light just sheen to the edge of that. Um <laughs> uh, where are we up to here? Palms you saying I heard it's difficult and I'm not experienced enough again to play. Um it's it's not a difficult game, if I'm honest, mate. Blood Bowl's not a difficult game. It's just um it's a game where good players will um will be very good. It's not. A, it's not. A, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You you need to. It's like chess. Like chess is an easy game, but you'll get your ass handed to you if you if you don't know the kind of like the the players, if you like. Um, Tony says, but trying to get a straight answer that makes sense on how to play poker is like trying to catch a unicorn fart. To be honest, like, I play quite a bit of poker. I mean, I, I used to play poker online and stuff, uh, and actually, it's the premise is pretty simple. You know, like there's, there's three, there's three cards come out, and you need to basically try and add those cards to your your two cards to make the best hand. And you, like obviously, like that's pretty much it, really, against everybody else. And there are odds that your hand will be better. So, for example, if you've got like if you've got two aces in your hand, and there's two aces on the table, the chances of somebody having a better hand than you is very very slim. So. That's when it comes down to maths and statistics. The bluffing side comes in when people people haven't got anything and they just want to try and cheat. Um, Palms, he says, in poker, much as in life, you have to play the cards as they're dealt. You do, but you don't. You you can sometimes play as if you have better cards, which is what some people do, and some people always get dealt better cards. <laughs> Uh, Busy said, I won an Xbox 360 in a 100 man poker tournament about 10 years ago. Pure skill. I've won a few quid in poker like many, many years ago, mate, like little poker events and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's it sucks it sucks up your time, that's for sure. Um, Ian says, joined late. What's that red you're using on the jacket? It is, mate. It is just um, Flesh Terror's red contrast paint. And I have literally put it on, I've thinned it down. With some uh, technical contrast medium, which is essentially contrast paint with no colour in it, it just thins it down, and then I've just been gradually just building up layer after layer after layer after layer, um, and when you do it like that, it doesn't, it doesn't get the same kind of like, you know how contrast paint on flat areas are a bit, that one? that's it, how flat uh, on like flat areas are a bit like patchy and stuff, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to do it like this. It seems to go on quite nice. So what I want to do is we'll get a little bit of Wild Rider Red. We'll just hide it on the edges. Um, Jeff Higdon, hello mate. He said, I'm expecting Blitzball second under the tree this year. Thank goodness they sell it at Barnes and Noble. So the spouse doesn't have to drive to the wizard store. That's how my little looking. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean, mate. Even even my wife, um, she doesn't mind going to like kind of like Forbidden Planet and stuff. But yeah, the Warhammer shop's always a bit like, I'll just wait outside for you. Palms, you see, I heard it was lots of rules. Um, nah, I, I, I actually don't think it's lots of rules, mate. It's it's like no, it's definitely you know, like not more rules than something like. Uh, like Underworlds, which which you you obviously know how to play, mate. It's not like it's no worse than that. It's just it's more about like if you're playing against somebody else who is on a similar level, it's a fun game. But if you're playing against somebody else who knows what exactly what they're doing, it's like a bit. It's a bit like getting caught out at chess. Like there's definitely kind of gotcha moments in it compared to like if you're brand new. Um, let me just put some, just a little bit of highlighting on the edge there, just to 
give it a little bit of pop. I'll put a tiny little bit just on here. Just to get it to stand out a bit. Oops, too much. Um, Peter says, uh, to catch a unicorn fart, you basically need an old but still smelling good perfume bottle half fill the glitter. <laughs> um, Palms is saying, sometimes you have to bluff that you don't have anything though, yeah. Um, yeah, you, yeah, I suppose you do really. Um, no, because if you see you haven't got a very good hand, like why would you be betting kind of thing, that's the problem with it. Um, John says, "You um, don't you play the guy opposite you in poker? No, mate, you, you play the whole table, basically. You play the whole table. Um, Jason says, I'll be doing like, a bit of like Christmas shopping in his local wizard store this weekend. Matt's in as well. Good evening, Matt. He says, thanks for the for bringing Fighting Fantasy books to my attention. Two books in now since Monday with multiple failures, but still many smiled. I'm glad you're enjoying it, mate. Thanks, mate. Nice, nice to kind of give you something new you hadn't played before. Uh, Ian says, yeah, cool tip. It looks slick. Yeah, I used the same one on on this one as well mate and it that's kind of how it turned out basically just it just goes on nice and smooth but it uh it turned out really nice i was happy with it um uh, derek says uh, got you got no when to hold them no when to fold them no when to walk away and no when to run yeah uh, tasty brain drain says am i the only one who's getting a slight echo from andy every now and again let me have a quick look. I don't, I don't think it's an echo, mate. Is it? Oh, hang on. Ah, do you know what it is? You might be. Uh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. It's that. No, it's not that. It's that. I think it's picking up. It was picking up from my camera as well. Jim's Bray's got, got his symbol back again. <laughs> nice to see your symbol back. Do you know what it's like? Uh, somebody else mentioned about the uh, echo before and I, I think what it was is the microphone on my camera here and the microphone here was both playing at the same time so but, but it was the sound was turned down really really low so you were probably just maybe just getting the edge of it sorry mate um tony says andy just mentioned two aces and two aces like i feel stressing an overload <laughs> uh, clinton says i wish there was a game shop besides sephora in the mall I miss I could spend the whole day, grab lunch together and be happy. Neither of us would wait outside. Do you know what, mate? It'd be nice just to go to anywhere. To be honest, it'd be nice to go and grab some lunch at the minute. We can't we can't even go out for lunch at the moment here. Um, James says, if it weren't for lockdown, I'd be tempted to get Blood Bowl just to play with one mate. Learning to play together is fun. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. I know what you mean, mate, actually. It's fine if you're just playing with it like with, with a friend. Pomsy saying it's a decent price, if I remember. It is a good price, mate, yeah. Um, Lord Maiden saying, yeah, when you're looking at the model, you have a bit of an echo. Yeah, I think it's the microphone on, on the camera, mate, was on. Sorry about that, folks, if it's caused any problems. Um, James says, even when we did that with Warcry, it absolutely batters me every game. It's a problem with my dice. I think the thing, I think the thing is with... I think the thing with Blood Bowl is there, there comes a point where you... There, there are, like, optimal ways to play, if you like. Um... And I think once once you kind of start to understand and think that way, if your opponent doesn't, like it's it's it, you basically if you just if you know how to just castle up and hide the ball and protect your players, it makes it a bit one sided. Um, uh, Palms is saying no, but sometimes you have you have a really good hand. You don't want people to know, so the pot goes up a bit. Yeah, there's there's a. There's two schools of thought. One would be that you you don't want to limp in, limp in being weak when you're kind of when you go into the pot, because people people can think that you've got like that you that you're playing it weak, and you can sometimes get basically what you can end up doing is if you if you go in weak, you're giving opponents opportunities to draw better hands. You almost want to go in strong, and get people out of the pot who have kind of weak hands. Because the last thing you want them to do is to, is to flop a good hand kind of thing. Uh, uh, Beauty saying, people don't know how to play poker, probably are very dangerous. It's a bit like, um, 
I think the difference is if you play online, like online poker, especially in the in the free in the free stuff, um, people like play hands that or, or they put gambles in they would never do with their own money, and, and it's it's a completely different game at like kind of low levels. Once you start playing for real money, um, like more, more than, and I'm not talking about hundreds of pounds, even tens of pounds, but once you start playing for like real money, people play a bit differently. But when it's free play and stuff people just go all in on the first hand and it just it kind of takes some of the enjoyment away from the game um yeah sorry folks if you, if you heard that echo thing I, it took me now to realize what it was it was because i had the uh, the laptop plugged into that the other day so i wanted the sound for the um for the what's it called for the fighting fantasy stuff um uh, John says, I meant rather than playing your cards, you play based on your opponent's cards, trying to work out what they have. Um, you you still play on your own cards. What you do is you try to judge. You don't get to see your opponent's cards, so you don't know what they've got. You've got to try and kind of weigh up by the way they're betting and by sort of counting cards and by understanding what's come out and what's, what's kind of... What's the odds of things coming out? It's like, this is what I mean about it. it's kind of almost statistical based. James and I designed part of a new school for Ian Livingston, so hopefully get to meet him next year. I'll tell you what, mate, if you do want to meet him, um, he'll certainly be at things like sort of UK Games Expo and stuff. He's pretty much there every time. I think he goes to Dragon Con as well down in London. James says, might be a total nerd and get him to sign something. I'll tell you what, mate, you'll have to join that very big queue because loads of people are total nerds and they all get him to sign stuff. Um, uh, up to here no worries blackjack con vegas 2021 i wish mate clint says i play put with my mates online and using zoom we all put a bit of money in the winner gets a big e-transfer that's kind of cool hello caller how are you doing sis i'm solely don't worry about that um, um <laughs> how the f did the channel come about well, card games and gambling it is called blackjack mate i wonder if I, it was only a matter of time wasn't it um uh, times are hard man you gotta make it you'll be right mate james says if i meet ian i would be about six of us in a conference room so the queue shouldn't be too bad ah oh, yes i thought you were talking about it at the convention mate no there's, there's nothing wrong with that mate there's nothing wrong with that I'm sure he. Uh, I'm sure he loves it. He's kind of made a, a career out of it. When you when you realise what Ian Livingston did after kind of selling Games Workshop, I mean he he basically owned IDOS, didn't he? The computer games company. So he uh, was kind of part of the the team that created Laura Croft and stuff like that as well. Uh, Tomb Raider. So he's he's uh, he's done all right. Has uh, has Ian Livingston. He's not done bad for himself. Right, I'm going to risk actually trying to put some eyeballs on this. So, have I still got my... Uh, I don't know if I've still got my little spiky bits. Hmm, have I got anything? Let's see what, we'll just use this. No, we won't. We'll use a brush. I just suddenly started going nuts. Hang on a second. My auto force is playing up. There we go. Oh. Um, right, where are we up to? Kevin Martin says, Oh, nice. What red is that? Uh, yes, mate. We just mentioned before there it is. Flesh tear is red, just thinned down kind of 50 50 with some contrast medium, and then just multiple, 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 multiple thin layers. That's all it is, mate. And then I've just put a really, I've got a little bit of Wild Rider red, just a tiny little touch just along the, the highlight on the edge there, just to give it a little bit of a light shine on the edge. But that's it, mate. Right, I'm going to try and. Um, Put eyes on, and I never normally. Right, I'm, I'm going to do this off camera so I can get it nice and close. Actually, I can't because it's too dark. Uh, 
Um, Blizzard says, well, except for the plague drones, my entire Death God army has done even the bases. Nice one, mate. Congrats. How does it feel? That, that, that sense of accomplishment. Jeff saying, based upon the poker terms Andy is using, I think he has extensive knowledge. I've, I've played once or twice, mate. Yeah, I have played. I've played a few times. Sorry, this is uh, off camera, folks, but I need to be very specific with the eyes. I think these will hardly be able to see them, to be honest. Ends up running all over here. Tidy that up. Um, <laughs> like a champion poker championship player. Oh, when poker was big, like in the kind of in the in the early two thousands, I used to watch a lot of it on TV as well. Trying to tidy up the eyes a little bit there. And we'll put the little dots in later. I think I'll, I'll do it off camera. Because when I pull it away from the camera, it's not light enough. Right. I think what we will do is I might just put a little bit of highlight on the on the trousers, I think. It might be a bit light. How about that? Maybe a bit ready. Um, more. Oh, let's do a bit of Steel Legion Drab, I think. Yeah, we'll use that and we'll just put a little bit on there. Lord Maiden saying, no, use a pen. I ain't got a pen, mate. Uh, I normally use a, um, a cocktail stick, but I, kinda, I can't see one on my table anyway. I've normally got one hang, hanging around. But I don't know, unless I've got one in a drawer here, have I? I'll put it in here. No, I haven't. I'll, I'll do it properly tomorrow. Right, let's uh, thin this down a touch. Just put a small highlight on the trousers here. Just give a little bit of depth to it. Jim says, blimey, been watching the channel for six months now. Where's the year gone? God, yes. Any Christmas plans? Do you mean Christmas plans for um, for me, mate? Like me and the family, mate? Or do you mean like channel-wise? Because uh, obviously one of the issues we've got is bloody lockdown stuff and that is, uh, is causing a lot of a lot of issues. Just get a little bit more here. Right. Um, Pomsey says, My wife loves the casino. Poker. <laughs> no, I never did that to her. Uh, Kirsten, good evening, Kirsten. How are you doing? She's looking great, Andy. Thank you. It's starting to come together. It looks a bit funny under the light in here, I think. The face looks a bit whited out. It's not quite as uh, white as that. But, um, yeah, and I need, to, I need to put some eyes in, but I'll uh, I'll focus on that one when I when I can see it better, when I can get it closer to my face. But, yeah, I'm just keeping it simple. Like I said before, it's mainly contrast paints. I'm not doing anything too, uh, too super fancy. Uh, yeah, for the channel, I assume actual Christmas plans of the three of your home. Yes, mate. Um, I'm not really sure, mate. We'll probably do a um, we'll probably do a fighting fantasy thing. I promise we'll do one over the Christmas. We normally do. Um, we'll probably have like a Christmas a Christmas party thing one Monday night. I think. 
So we'll probably do that one Monday. And what I'll probably do is, I'll do like a bit of a, um, like an awards thing, like kind of games of the year type thing. I've done that, I, I think I forgot to do it last year, but I did it the year before and that was quite, that was quite cool. I'm gonna darken that down folks, by the way, as well. I'm not gonna, I'm not leaving it that, that brighter red. I'm just getting that on there just to, just to give me a base to, to work from. I'm gonna get some, uh, some of that in there. Um, Beauty says, uh, you've definitely read the super systems. <laughs> yeah, Doyle Brunson. God, yeah. I am, um, um, oh, what's he called again as well? I've forgotten the guy's name now. Daniel Negrano as well. He's a, uh, he's a good one to watch. More of one of the kind of like the modern, the modern guys. He knows what he's doing. Um, Skirmish Manager Gaming, hello mate, how are you doing? It says, big up mate, loving the Malifaux. Tough game to play, but great fun. Looking forward to New Explorer Society. Yeah, the New Explorers have uh, just, just come out, haven't they? Um, nice to see new factions being added. Um, Marcus is saying, he made it in. Nice to see you, Marcus. Clint's saying, you should do a year in review video and just have 10 seconds of silence. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Uh, James says, we were talking about you, uh, Kirsten. Very grateful for the hard work we were, mate. So the S icon is something to do with joining as a member. Not sure why it was showing after my name, though. It keeps coming and going. James's keeps coming and going as well. There's obviously some glitch in it, I think, tonight. Uh, Lord Maiden says, I thought the plan was Blackjack Legacy all day, every day. I was talking about doing, like, a long stream, wasn't I? Um, oh, <laughs> Lord Technopan says, you want to know what a kitchen smells like if you drop a jar of pickled onions? I thought not. I've got a bit of a, a weird... <laughs> A weird phobia, a weird phobia of, um, of of vinegar. I'm not even going to go into it on the stream. That's one for another night. If I hit ten thousand subscribers, I'll tell you about my vinegar fear. <laughs> um, thank you very much, James Bray, new member. I don't, I don't know whether it'll uh, what it keeps if it'll keep giving you a, um, a new symbol or what, mate. But yeah, thank you very much for your support, buddy. Um, Peter says, so we meet again, Mr. Chaos Trophy Rack, with umpteenth different colours and style helmets. <laughs> nice one. David says, it's the gremlins in the system. Don't feed them after 12. You're right, mate. Sounds like a bit of a pickle. You are not wrong. That sounds like it's going to be a bit of a nightmare, that one. It's going to take some cleaning up, mate, that's for sure. It wouldn't be a Wednesday night hobby hangout if we didn't get round to food somehow, mate. It's, it's just that, uh, unfortunately, the way we've got round to it is by you dropping a jar of pickled onions. Right, let's just get that one, just darken that one down a touch. Right. James says, just to confuse things, YouTube Premium just popped up and said I could join for free. Ah, yes. Do you know what it is? I did get an email about this the other day. So if anybody has YouTube Premium, so for those of you who pay for YouTube so you don't get any adverts or anything, you get one free um, membership um, per month. And you can use it. It doesn't cost you anything. It's the same as if you've got Amazon Prime and you get a free Twitch membership. Um, you can use it. So it, if, you, if you're not using it on anybody else... And you like to use it on me? Um, it's it helps support it helps support me and helps support the channel. So yeah, if you do have if you do have um, YouTube Red or whatever it's called now, YouTube Premium, yeah, you get a free membership. Um, Jim said I did the free thing a few months ago, but I think they made it a permanent thing. Yeah, I think it was a it was a trial a while back, mate, and and I just literally like two days ago saw the email saying that they were they were making it permanent. <laughs> Lord Technopan says, how do I type and mop? I would just get them up and done, mate. I think that's more important at the moment. Um, yeah, my other half would kill me. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, mate. Right, I need to try and... We need to somehow do the eyes on this model. This is going to be a toughie. Right, let me... Uh, I'm going to regret doing this, but... Christian said, I don't have YouTube Premium, but I do pay for extra storage on Google Google Drive. I'm not sure if that counts. I think it's just the YouTube Premium, mate, if I'm honest. I think. 
could be wrong though, right? Excuse me while I'm going. I'm just going to put the eyes on this model. You'll be able to see me doing it. God, my eyes are shot. I think I might wait till tomorrow and do it with the. Uh, do it with my cocktail stick method. It's going to take a little bit of tidying up, I think. Oh. Just get a little bit of the flesh colour and tidy it around the eye. <laughs> David says, don't worry too much. Remember, lazy eyes are a real thing too. Do you know what it is? I, mean, I, I normally don't even bother with painting eyes, if I'm honest. But it was just that the face is... Um, the face is so kind of thin, so fine, that... Uh, it felt like it needed it. It felt like it needed it. So. That'll do. Let me get my light back down for it. I'm just we'll focus that one in so you can see. The way we do it. That's not too bad. You can't really see it very well. It's, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot lighter in the flesh. I think. Just All right. That looks like we're getting there. I think we'll probably call that one done for a night, rather than go further and wreck it. Let me just. Uh, so we've got we've got two of the uh, of the Justice Crew box done. And yeah, like, I mean you've you've just seen me tonight, but yeah, it's mainly mainly contrast paints. Just try to keep them simple. Just uh, just trying to uh, get them done. Palms, you said if you accidentally leave a Citadel pot open and it goes hard, is there any way of saving it? There is, mate. Yeah, you can put just put a little bit of um, thinner in it and just stir it up. You can get away with a little bit of water, but um, uh, yeah. YouTube Premium recently told me I just passed ten thousand hours of ad-free watch time. I don't believe it. I call me right or kind of. I tell you what, mate. When I see how many like minutes or hours of watch time my channel gets of people watching my stuff, and I'm not a big channel, I tell you what, it must be scary. Like the amount that some of the bigger ones get. Peter says, I just dropped a pot of open Balthazar gold and not even a drop spilled. Definitely favoured by the gods now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Mark is saying, eyes are such a pain. You are right, mate, they are. Um, somebody just saying, what's the cocktail stick? With it? I normally get a cocktail stick, sharpen it up with a scalpel to a really fine point and just use that to kind of dot the eyes in because it's like solid rather than the kind of like a, a tip of a brush moving. Because sometimes it's you've, it's really hard to tell when you've actually reached the model because the brush starts to give, and sometimes you can kind of like splodge the eye. So I tend to use a cocktail stick, a really sh like sharp fine point, and just dot the eyeballs in. But uh, yeah, I kind of I kind of got away with it tonight, I think. Um, Palms, you see, it was Rhinox hide, and it went in the bin a couple of weeks ago. But good shout, um, the Golden Gods, yeah. So, folks, I think what I'll do is, while I'm sitting having a bit of a chat with you there, I will tidy up my uh, my couple of pots here, put them back in their little in their little spots where they go, put them back in the houses, and we'll sit and have a nap for five. Once I've had a bit of a tidy round, get these ones. Where's my f one flesh? Steel, Wild Rider Red. I'll tell you what, this is obsessive when everything's got its own little home. Um, contrast technical up there. Right, and I will put it back to the main screen while I, while I wash my brushes. 
if I can find my brush soap, there it is. Um, Tony says, what flesh colors did you use on Lady Justice's midriff? I used Kislev flesh, mate. And then I used um, a, a thin down Gulliman flesh wash over the top. And then thin down um, uh, Kislev flesh again. And just kind of like blended it in a little bit, mate. Um, Lord Maiden says, a painter friend did share how they did eyes. It was with the white, do a line of black and then tie it up. Yeah, I've tried that before, mate. But to be honest, it's I don't think my skills are good enough. And the, the eyes on this model are so small. Um, what I tend to do is I, t I tend to kind of I'll do the white bit and then shape it shape the eye with the skin color again um, and then just try and just dot the, dot the eye in because I, I tend to find if you put like a line in sometimes it makes the actual pupil look way too big but um, maybe I'm just not good enough so uh, let's clean that out again um, Jim says my TV went into photo mode the other day seeing your models on a 55 inch screen isn't very flattering I can imagine mate I can imagine it's uh, yeah it, honestly like you get you get away with a multitude of sins when you're just painting them and, and especially when you when you see them on the tabletop that's how people see them they see them come from like three foot away or something like taking pictures of your minis especially individual models taking pictures of them like it makes you think that your painting's much worse than it really is. Like not you, not you specifically. I, I mean, in general. Um, <laughs> Lord Tetter Pants says my kitchen now smells of every cleaner I could discover under the sink, not the vinegar. Uh, so it, it, it might smell like you've like you've murdered somebody, mate. Like it just stinks of bleach now. <laughs> um, Pomsy says, have you, have you used much Tesseract Glow? Any tips on that? Um, I haven't bought it, mate. It's, I think it's the only paint I didn't buy. I just I just didn't have any use for it, and I, and I, and I didn't see me having any use for it, so I didn't buy that one, mate. Um, <laughs> James says, it looks like the classic pick of Duncan Rhodes for Space Marine. <laughs> yeah, I know the one, mate. There's another classic Space Marine, isn't it, where the eyes are like kind of like all over the place. Um, Jeffrey Higdon says, speaking of chess, anyone watch The Queen's Gambit? Super good, makes me want to learn how to play chess feel bad i've never taken the time do you know what it is mate i saw a thing on tv the other day or it might have been online where they were saying like since the queen's gambit like sales of chess sets have gone up like exponentially and things like um like um chess chess sets being sold on amazon or searches for how to play chess has just gone like unbelievably up it's amazing isn't it like i guess it's like the dnd &D effect for like stranger things and things like that it's amazing the effect that stuff like that can have. Well, folks, that, that's that. Is that me painting two weeks and painting two models? I'm quite, I'm quite happy with how that's kind of panned out. I know you can't see it, but let me just let me see if I can get a zoom. I'm happy enough with that. It'll, it'll get a little bit of um, matte varnish on it tomorrow as well, I think. But I'm happy with how that panned out. Uh, CSI Derbyshire. James says it's super inconsistent and you get a random green or yellow blob. I think you have to really, really shake them up. I think that's the, uh, the issue with that kind of stuff. James says I like warp lightning contrast with mood green. Yeah, that's that's exactly why I, I've got those two, mate. That was why I didn't buy the other stuff. I, I did buy, I've got one, I have now got one of every base paint and one of every layer paint and one of every contrast paint, so... That's kind of it. Just it, it's just consistent for me to be able to just get my hands on them and just pick up and go. Um, Peter Cumin says, "Great job, thank you very much." Lord Mitten says, uh, "Looks great. When can I fight them?" The way current things are made, probably around twenty twenty four. Lord Tenor says, "I've painted nothing, but I've done my cards, wrapped my prezies, and mucked about in the kitchen." Um, yes. Um, James is here on Discord. He's 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 in our thingy group, mate. He's in our Patreon group. How many pickled onions did you have? Yeah, did you have to eat all the pickled onions, mate, as well? Let me just blow my candle out before I forget to do it later. Um, yeah. So that's not uh, 
Not a bad night's painting. I've quite enjoyed that. Love Mint says it's a date I'll pencil you in. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, mate. I'd love I'd love to get a game in, mate, when things are. Uh... In fact, I, I would love to play a lot of games with lots of views once we can start to do it. I, I had all sorts of plans of getting to see people and traveling around to different conventions and having a day at Warhammer World and all that kind of stuff. Just move the mic up a little bit. But yeah, those things will have to we'll have to wait, I think. They'll have to wait until till the world allows. Um, yeah, you you definitely are a bit of a Twitter fiend, aren't you, Palmsy? I, I can't get away with Twitter. I don't really understand it. I post a few bits and pieces on there, but yeah, I'm, I, I don't really understand it properly. Like, I don't really understand what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't I don't want to get into, like, into politic chats, and I don't want to get into kind of all sorts of stuff on there. Um, but yeah, I just... Um, I don't really understand it. Um, I'm just having a quick look on there, see how we're doing. Um, I get me to delete a couple of things here. Uh, no, I just I thought I had an email, but it's just when it tells me when I've gone live. Like, like I don't know that my channel's gone live. Uh, Peter says I really miss the crisis show in Antwerp. Never thought I would annoy me so much. It's. Yeah, not getting to like UK Games Expo this year has been, been the big one for me actually. Um, that's the one I really kind of look forward to. And what I tend to do is, or what I did last year, and, I, and my plan going forward was, was to almost set half of it is like work and business and kind of meetings with people and, and like having proper professional kind of sit down meet, meetings with, with companies and stuff. And then half of it is just me enjoying myself and playing games and meeting people and having a beer and having a catch up and stuff. And I've 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 missed that social kind of event. Ian says Twitter is pretty awful in general. Lots of people say that, mate. And I and I kind of excuse me, I kind of find it not um like I, I don't find it like political or like I don't I don't see all the drama in there. I only really follow people kind of in in the gaming universe or friends on here and stuff so i tend not not to like get caught up in any of the kind of twitter drama but but i hear about what a cesspool it is i just tend not to be involved in it um marcus says i, I won one competition by freaking out almost every one of my opponents by just being a goth and them smiling <laughs> it simple scared the hell out of everyone unsettled and just capitalizing it <laughs> nice one mate Lord Maiden says, I just need to paint my cobblestones and then glue these bottles to bases. Uh, Christian says, once he gets the vaccine, he's heading up to and get the games in, so probably summer 2021. Yes, mate. I can't wait. We we, we were planning it to kind of to get together beforehand, weren't we? I had invited you up here. So, um, yeah, as soon as we can, mate. We definitely will. D Dirk's off now. Good night, Dirk. Uh, you can see these base colours are down as well. Time for highlights tomorrow. Uh, thanks for the company tonight. Thank you, uh, Joachim, for coming in. Cheers, mate. Uh, Pixies is trying to set up an online Memoir 44 game with his mates for the holidays. Maybe that will scratch the itch. Online stuff's... It's it's not the same. Like, it's it, it's weird. It's it, it's a weird thing, the online stuff. Um, It was a really interesting article I read yesterday, which was about how... Online conventions have, have been a bit of a disaster this year, to be honest. And it said that one of the things that convention, the people that organise these online conventions, one of the things they've missed is that people don't necessarily go to conventions to like to hear like companies talk and do and like and do demos, if you like. They go because they can escape like they 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 can escape the real world for a few days like they look forward to it because there's no work they get to meet up with like a load of friends they've not seen in ages they get to play games they get to go for beers and socialize and and it's uh, and it's around and they're around the hobby that they love kind of thing and this and they're saying that basically people like people don't like people can't commit like two or three days while they're at home to to go to like an online convention type thing to just sit and to sit and listen to to people, companies basically doing a sales pitch, and I think it's been kind of handled in a bit of a weird way. There's there's better ways to do it, but I think it, it all happened so quick this year with companies getting the pull, the plug pulled and then having to try and come up with a way to make it online. I think it's just 
it's not been uh, it's not been done really well. To be honest, I think Mantic almost kind of made the best of a bad situation because what they do is they, they basically split their day up into sections of right, we're going to talk about Kings of War for an hour. So if you're only interested in Kings of War, you, you tune in for that hour. If you're only interested in Dead Zone, you tune in for that hour or whatever. So they do some pretty good jobs of like of, of managing to do that. But some of the big ones like Gen Con and like um what's the um Essence Spiel and stuff, I think they kinda missed the point of it a little bit. Um Ian says, I wish there was a way to block all non hobby stuff on the socials. Is you on Facebook? Still a bit of work. I, I think to be honest with you, I, I tend to if there's if there's somebody I'm following on Twit on Twitter, and most of the stuff they put, like if, if I'm following somebody because they are a like, a like I like the models that they paint and I want to see their pictures and stuff, but all they do is pay, is post like political angry posts or something, I tend to just unfollow them. Like unfortunately, I'm not I'm not really into politics and all that kind of stuff. Like I don't I don't I don't go to Twitter to find out what's happening in the world. If you like, it's not my news site, so I tend to just delete that kind of stuff but um so yeah my so my my twitter post is generally pretty much 99 percent hobby related really and hearing about new games coming out or or people that i like people just chatting about generally friendly stuff telling about what's happening in their, in their lives and stuff like that so i think i kind of escaped the worst of it but I, I don't follow a lot of people to be fair maybe that's why maybe it gets out of hand the more you follow how many how many people do i follow let's have a look um, can't even find my uh, my my, my uh, homepage. Here. I follow four hundred and nineteen people, which is which is a lot to be fair. But if I look down my feed now, um, what have I got? I've got Palmsy here. <laughs> I've got um, <laughs> James Hewitt with a lasagna. <laughs> um, talking about Mage Wars. We've got Sam here talking about some stuff. Got Palmsy on his stuff on Tiny War Games. Um, Donna or Dana Howell got some PS5 stuff, mini war gaming. Um, so adverts. Who else have I got in here? Kind of just gaming meme stuff. Dicey guy talking about the uh, the monolith stuff that keep keep turning up everywhere. These things. It's kind of just. Yeah, I just I just tend to just find that. So that's mine. So mine's not too bad to be fair, but I don't really know what to post on there. Like, like I don't really know what it's for. Um, Busey saying video. <laughs> Peter says people go to conventions to talk to the punters and see stuff in the flesh. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong, mate. I insist tabletop simulator is okay, but it still leaves a ton to be desired. It's better than not at all, but for me, I don't use it enough to understand. Like to, what's the word I'm looking for? So that so that it's not a barrier. If you like, I don't use it often enough for that, that all of the shortcuts are obvious and things. Um, Lord kept my pants in. I've never been on Facebook or Twitter, but I'm very old. It's funny. Like a little while ago, I thought I was going to give kind of social media a bit of a break and stuff, but I I can't. Like the job I do now, um, I I basically follow like. I, I follow lots of companies. I follow lots of like other channels and stuff like that to to basically understand what's happening, so that I, I can make sure I'm on top of stuff. So when I talk about stuff on a Monday night live stream, I, I've got a a broad view about about something, and I can form my own opinion on on the on the things that are happening in and around the industry. So I kind of have to be on them really, but I try to not like just scroll through on a, on a, like on an hourly basis. I might kind of sit and have a cup of coffee, and I'll, I'll have a bit of a catch up and have a look at stuff. But I, t I tend not to like spend my life on them and stuff. Um, Camo says, "Thank you for avoiding politics." Yeah, I mean, I've I've got I've got my own strong views on things. Do you know what I mean? But but this is not the place to kind of discuss them, really. And and I, and I don't feel the need to discuss them on on Twitter. I, I'll talk to my wife about them. I'll talk to family about them, and we'll kind of have discussions and things. But like. I don't, I don't, I don't need to have them on, on my channel. This is not a politics channel, if you like. It's just, it's meant to be a bit of escapism. It's meant to be a bit of a hobby. So, so I tend not to talk about that kind of stuff on here. Um, plus, also as well, even if 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 you and I, you the viewer and, and me, have different views on stuff, doesn't mean that we don't enjoy the hobby. So, there's nothing wrong with us 
like different or having different opinions on things um like we, we come together because we because we like the same thing there's there is something that we do have common the grounds in so yeah that's why that, that stuff's best left, best left out of the way um abuse is saying best to stick the daily mail or the sun for the latest news yeah mark writes is what would i need to play mala for you would need mate the rules which are free online you'd need the cards which are free online you need a deck of cards a playing card the mala four decks are um the, the the four different suits are tomes masks crows and rams um However, there is a thing on the Malifaux site which basically says, like, you can use heart to be masks or whatever it is. So you, as long as you've got a deck of cards, you can use it. And then basically any, any models, you can, you can sub in any models you wanted, mate. You can, if you want to, is pick up, like, a, a core box like this. I think this was about 30 quid, something like that. And um, there is basically one, two, three, four, five, there's six models in this. Um, that I think it's probably about 35 soul stones worth. So basically the way Malifaux works is you get a points cost. Each model has a points cost. You can see in the top corner there where it says 16 points, 10 points, uh, 5 points. So basically, I don't know what it is now, but it used to be about 50 soul stones was like a decent sized game. But when I first started, we played like 35, 25 soul stones and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's you, you could... You, you can download these cards for free online. The rules are free. Have a read through them. Get yourself a deck of cards and just sub some models in or, or buy a starter box or something. Um, just pick pick one of those core boxes, basically, of a, of a faction that you like the look of. Um, and that's all you really need. It's a, it's a pretty cheap game to get into, really. It can get expensive over time because you end up wanting to buy all the new shiny things. But in order to just give it a try and see if it's for you, mate, it's relatively cheap. It's probably as cheap as any game, to be fair. Um, Peter saying the monoliths were an artist stunt, weren't they? I, I think they were an artist stunt, but they, but they are all over the world, to be fair. I mean, I, I don't think it's aliens, if that's what you mean. Uh, Busey saying, if you want fake news, stick to the BBC. I'm getting to a point, mate, to be fair, where I, I don't trust any news from any site at the moment. It feels like they're, they kind of uh, they all agree too much. That's 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 what worries me. Uh, Jeffrey says politics are not our focus. You're right, mate. Marcus says I'm 33. And I've never had a Twitter, Facebook, or MySpace or any kind of social media. Mainly is I don't go to the internet for drama. I like hobby stuff and stuff like that. I get that, mate. The only thing I would say in in kind of to as a counter argument to that is you miss out or you could miss out on a lot of interesting conversations and seeing some fantastic stuff by. Like, like, for example, my Facebook group, there's no politics in there. There's no drama in there. We're just, everyone's asking questions. They're talking about new games. They're sharing stuff they've painted. Like, it's it's just a group of like-minded people. It's the same in the in the Discord group for the Patreon. It's just like-minded people. Like, I recently, like, with the whole American elections and stuff, just said, look, no politics in here. I've got no problem with people. If they want to talk about it, go and have a private discussion about it. I'm not going to kind of discourage you having political views if you like but just let's not talk about it in here we, we come here to kind of to escape that kind of stuff um so let's kind of let's kind of we talk about all sorts of random stuff favorite films music books all sorts of stuff we'll we'll touch on things in the news and stuff but as soon as it kind of starts getting serious political stuff um it's it's best just to kind of to have a little space in the world where you can escape that kind of stuff really um, let me just scroll back because that's gone a bit fast there. Um, Tony says, for the first time in ages, I'm excited for a video game release. Cyberpunk 2077 should arrive tomorrow and I'm giddy as a keeper. I've been tempted, I'll be honest with you. I've been tempted to pick it up, but I don't know whether I'm just getting caught up in the hype because there's been nothing. So I'm going to kind of wait a bit, I think, and I'll see what the reviews are like and I'll see because I've heard mixed stuff. I've been watching some videos the last couple of days, like some mixed stuff. I've heard the... The PC version needs a pretty good kind of um, processor and video card to run it. It was something I was watching tonight. I mean, I've got a decent, decent-ish PC to, to do that. Um, but if you want to get the best out of it, I haven't bought a PS5. I haven't bought one of the new Xboxes, so I'd be buying like a PS4 version. Um, and I just, I just want to, I want to find out. I've heard there's loads of glitches and stuff in it at the minute, but there's a day one patch coming. I, I think I'm just going to kind of hold off. I, I got my fingers burned. I think the last time I got caught up in the hype 
was with um, Red Dead Redemption 2, and I, it ended up being pretty dull, if I'm honest. So, yeah. Um, um, Jeffrey Sien, oh, sorry, all Lord Maiden's having a bit of a chat there as well, saying about buying the new stuff. Crew box about 30 quid, Dexter about a tenner, yeah. Jeff saying that's the problem. We've gotten to the point where we find things to divide us. Politics, for example, my po political beliefs are a small part of me. Let's enjoy for the things we enjoy. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm a big... I, I'm a big believer in I like people having different points of view. Like, I'm never going to learn anything new in my life if I just surround myself with people who think the same way I do. Like, if, if, if I find somebody that doesn't agree with me on something, I quite happily have a conversation to understand why they feel the way they do. It might not change my mind, and I might not change their mind, but I think understanding people's differences is, is what makes us older and, well, not older, but it makes us wiser and it makes us... It enriches your life basically to understand opposing viewpoints the problem is hobby groups are not the place to do that this youtube channel is not the place to do that so I, i'm a big sort of proponent of of talking to people who have different views but i'm also a big fan of doing it in the right place um um <laughs> yeah tony see i have faith in cd project red i still play witcher 3 five years on yeah, I think they'll do. I think they'll do a good job. I'm just not sure if it'll be, if it'll live up to expectations day one. And that's kind of where I'm thinking because if it if it's not if it's not perfect day one or it's not as near as damn it as perfect day one, I might as well wait and because it'll be cheap next year. So I might as well hang on for a bit. Um, Lord Maiden saying fifty soul stones now is the new thirty five. I thought when I looked there, mate, and I saw Lady Justice was like sixteen points. I was thinking that sounds high. So what's that like twenty six? Uh, 31, 36, 41, 42, 40. Yes, there's about 43 points in that box set. Yeah, so you're probably not wrong. Mate. You're probably not far off there, mate. Uh, David McKay is going to call it night. Catch you later. See you later, David. Um, Palms, he's saying they're a pretty safe bet, you'd have to say. I think the problem is, mate, is that there's been so many delays and all that kind of stuff. I, I think the game will be magnificent. I'm just not sure if it'll be magnificent tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Whether it'll take a little while until like every everybody's found all the bugs and all the glitches and all that kind of stuff. ASDF says, are we living in John Carpenter's they live? We are a bit, mate. Sometimes I feel like we're living in the thing where there's... Uh, like we're all we're all stranded. We're in an isolated place, and one of us has got a, got a weird disease. <laughs> We've got to find out who it is. Um, excuse me. <coughs> um, where are we up to? Marcus says my trusted news source is the Onion. <laughs> Marcus says bacon. Uh, Red Wars Wargaming. Good evening, Anna. How are you doing, my dear? Says I highly recommend the Patreon. Thank you very much. I need a, get a drink. I've got a dry throat now. <laughs> and then we joke we couldn't say it about penguins. Yeah, I, I know. You 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 all knew what I meant though when I was kind of when I was saying about no politics stuff. Like. People come to the group to escape what's happening in the world at the minute sometimes. And I've got no problem with people wanting to talk about it. I just don't I just I just don't want that to be the point of contention that people people disagree over in the group if you know like, go go and go and have the politics. Have your political chats in a political place. Don't have them in a hobby group kind of thing. Um Lobin says, no, don't get Cyberpunk yet. It's been said that it has loads of weird bugs. Yeah, that, that that's exactly what I've been reading about. That's why I'm kind of, I'm holding off it, mate. Um, James Brace says, the Patreon is very good. And in the darkest days of lockdown, it really was a shining star at keeping me sane. Fully worth being a member. Thank you very much, mate. Um, it's been it's been hugely great for me as well. I mean, it, it's given me the opportunity to do this day in, day out as a full-time job now. It's, um, which, do you know what, it, like, like, in, in an alternative world somewhere, that there's me sitting there, still in my old job, like, just pretty much, just in God knows what kind of a mental state with a job I absolutely hated, and, and through lockdown, being isolated and stuff, I think it would have sent me insane, if I'm honest. Like, I can't, I can't thank you lot enough, because that support gave me the, the push to be able to do this. So, um, yeah, I, I can't thank you all enough. 
PC and I started and stopped with consoles at PlayStation. I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, like, the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox are the first two that I've not bought at launch day. Now, to, to be fair, I don't have the money like now. I, I, I used to obviously have a, a well-paid job kind of thing. Um, and as much as I hated the job, the money was all right. Uh, and, I, and I could afford to buy those kind of things on launch day. I can't do that now. But even if I could, I don't, I don't think I would have done this time. I'm still... I play so infrequently that, to be honest, I'm, I'm quite happy just kind of get, playing with, on the PS4 type thing. I've been playing on the Switch more than anything recently. Um, James is... Um, some amazing Patreon members have done 3D printing for him or sent him spare transfers. That's what it's all about. It's nice with the Patreon because it's a nice community of like-minded people, but not too many that it becomes overwhelming. So it's um, like it's a, it's a nice little kind of tight-knit group. The Facebook group is fantastic as well, but there's over a thousand people in there and some people never speak and some people will just come and drop a link to their latest Kickstarter or to, to, to their latest video or whatever, and then I, and then I delete them. <laughs> um, but generally, like, yeah, the, the Patreon's just... Even these even these chats, these chats are similar. What is that? There's, like, 40-odd people in the chat now as well. It's a, it's, a, it's, like its own little community type thing, the live streams, and I, I like that. That's what this channel was always about, and it always will be, to be fair. It'll never do big numbers. It, it, this'll never be a channel that has, like... 50,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers doing live streams to like 800 people. It'll never be like that because the topics are not like, the topics are not big enough. It's not about the big games. The topics are not like controversial, but I, but I like that. I like what we've got. I like, I like what we do. Um, Paul says the divisions were always there. Social media only shows them to you by exposing you to people and opinions that you would not have otherwise encountered. I think it's deeper than that, mate. I think it it exposes you to people who ordinarily wouldn't have wouldn't have said those things. I I think people have always had differences of opinion, but it's it's like that whole thing about don't talk about religion, politics. Um, in generally, people wouldn't. If you're like sitting in a in a in a like a room full of people, you ordinarily wouldn't kind of talk about politics or talk about religion. Um, like religious beliefs and things, where on Twitter and stuff, people are not anonymously can kind of just like wade in and spill their guts and and say all of the things. So I think I don't think anything's changed in in the way people think. I think the thing that's changed is the fact that people have a platform to talk about it now, with maybe without some of the repercussions of like um, having to say it to somebody's face. I think. Um, Um, let's have a look. Lord Maiden saying, "Yeah, Patreon's a great place to be." Yeah, plus people say crap on the internet they'd never see. It. Yeah, that yeah, that's exactly where I was just getting that made. Um, Master and Totem is free. You don't get free Soul Stone now. Ah, I need to do a bit more reading. Me, I didn't realize. I knew I knew the Master was free. It always used to be, we didn't as well. Um, I didn't realize you don't get Soul Stones now though, free ones. Uh, Jeff says, "Totally agree. That's my point. We're all different. Let's just enjoy each other's company." And happy we have forums like this to share. Exactly. <laughs> it's Christian. He's been mocked. Um, Lord Mills, if you take a henchman as a leader, the henchman and effigy is free. The leader's cost is if you take it as a non-leader model. Yeah, yeah, that's right for, for the henchman, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's Palmsy. Um, what was that one? What was that about, Peter? I don't know. Um... Busy saying, it's just like streams and hobby content that are oven ready. Turn on the oven, PC, and good to go. Um, what were we talking about there? We're talking about the gaming and stuff. Um, Paul saying, that's also true, but I don't think it's the cause of the divisions. Think back to the 80s, society was very divided. Yeah, I think it's just, it, it's everywhere now. It's it's easy. I think one of the reasons, I mean, we're getting off topic a little bit here, but I think one of the reasons is, not only do people have a platform to air their views, it's also much easier to find people who think the same way that you do as well. So if you've got some quite radical left-wing, right-wing views, um, you in the past you might you might never have really encountered other people who felt the same way, where now it is much easier to. People have always had them views, and people will still continue to have them views. There's just an opportunity for those people to to kind of to come together now. 
Um, James is saying, I appreciate the no politics comment, mate. I live and breathe at work. <laughs> I bet you do, mate, yeah. Paul saying, never buy a AAA video game on day one. Always give it a few months. Uh, I, in the past, I've, I've got caught up with the hype and stuff like that, but I don't I don't really have the time to play them that much now. So I know for a fact, like, like I, there's still games that I want to go back and play that I haven't, which which were like, which I was really hyped for. I, I, haven't, I haven't played um, Last of Us 2 yet, to be fair. And I, w- I really want to play that. So I'd be, I'd be better off buying that and playing that for a bit. And then when I'm finished playing that, then I'll pick up Cyberpunk and, and play that kind of thing. Uh, ah, is that is that what it is, Christian? It's, you know, I figured it out. YouTube want me to start paying to be a member again. So, yeah, I've been marked by YouTube. I can't be, I, that can't be right, mate. It wouldn't publicly do that, would it? That's disgusting if that's the case. I need to do a bit of digging, mate. I think that's a, I think that's disgraceful if that's the case. Uh, Marcus is saying, since I grew up in the 80s and 90s, I love cyberpunk style movies. Yeah, I, I do love the theme of it, mate. I've heard good things about the RPG. I, I love like Blade Runner and all that kind of like alternative future type stuff. So it, it, it's right up my street, but I know I won't put the hours in that it deserves now. So I might as well kind of wait, I think. Um, Lord Tetapan says, I'm a, I'm the only person who doesn't like Keanu Reeves. Yeah, I think so, mate. <laughs> um, Peter Nicholas says, who's Keanu Reeves? Peter Nicholas. You must you must know who Keanu Reeves is. Um, Phil says, Guinness is made out of penguins. The white stuff floats up to the top. Little known fact. <laughs> oh, uh what was that one? Robert Zunk said something there before. It skipped off the top of my screen. Um, take care, everyone. Got to go. Time for a walk. Been walking and riding my bike a couple of times a day to get outside. Nice one, mate. Good one. Peter Nicholas is Neo. Yes, John Wick. Question mark. I tell you what, mate. You are missing a trick. What? Not watching the John Wick films. Go and get yourselves. There's three of them now. Go and watch them. Lord Tetrapan says I can't watch anything with him in it. Seriously, I I like the guy. To be fair, I I mean he's he's made some crap as well. Um, but yeah, I, I like the guy. Um, Jeff says this is the one and only thing I support on Patreon. Best money spent. Thank you, Jeff. That's much appreciated, mate. Um, <laughs> Jim says the undercurrent of flirting between Palmsy and Peter and it's been a joy. I think there's a bit of man love going on there, isn't there? There's a bit, there's a bit of mutual admiration. I think if it wasn't for lockdown, mate, things could have been very different. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not flirting. Paul says there was a topic. I can't even remember what it was talking about now, mate. Um, uh, where are we up to? <laughs> it's his pigtails. It's his new. It's his beard. That's what it is. It's his new beard. Well, Tetapan said I'm not allowed topics. I'm time to <laughs> beer. Bloody hell. Um, James says, well, I, did, I got very little Peyton done tonight, but I've had a good giggle. That's what it's about, mate, isn't it? Jeff says, it's dinner, dinner time. He's going to head off now. I, says, I look forward to your streams. Thank you very much, mate. I'm much appreciated. Um, it's the only thing that makes sense. The symbol jo- matches the joint icon, and I'm fairly certain I originally joined about this time last year. Oh, I, t- I tell you, I'm, do you know what? It is? If, if it's shorter to you, that's one thing, mate, but I think that's, I think that's terrible if that's, if that's what it does. I'll, I'll do some digging, mate. But it's, uh, yeah, that, that's not very good. Uh, Cyberpunk is a genre is pretty cool. Yeah, I agree, mate. And Peter says, was the topic dreadfully? Maybe one day, mate, for you, I'll do it. Uh, anyway. Paul's uh, saying, uh, the Keanu Reeves pretty stand-up guy outside of his films, regardless of where you like his acting. Yeah, he comes across as a pretty nice guy. He's, like, he's pretty down-to-earth, to be fair. And I, I am a fan of these arch motorbikes as well. They look pretty cool. But it is 20 past 11 now. It's later than I thought. Yeah, it's later than you think. I was going to start singing there. I'm going to call it a night now. I Please, folks, please do. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock, I'll have my new video um, drop. And I really would appreciate it if you check it out. It's it's something a little bit different. It's a bit longer than some of them. It's, it's based upon the law and the background of a few different games. Um, so yeah, please, please do check it out. I really appreciate that. Share it with your friends if you can do. Sharing the videos, watching them all the way through to the end, all that kind of stuff, really, really does uh, help me out. So I'd appreciate that. Um, Christian, share the link for the Patreon there. If anybody would like to join the Patreon, 
hugely appreciated. Two dollars a month gets you in and access to the Discord server, and then there's different tiers above that as well. So thank you very much, folks. I will see you. Well, I'll see you in the video tomorrow, but uh, I'll see you all next Monday back for another Monday night live stream. So take care, folks. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses which will give you access to a private Discord server. It will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month and a number of other things including getting your name at the end of every video like these awesome folks who already support me now.